All right, well, let's go ahead and get into it. We, everything's already rolling. We can start from the – he'll start it from when we get going. But uh, I'm going to just start right off the bat. So what's going on, man? The, the infamous custom motto. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, man. I'm, uh, good. I'm super glad to get you in here. Like I was telling you before, you're somebody that I wanted to get on. And I would say more so wanted to have a conversation with before I even knew I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I mean, this is something that I'm excited about. And there's a lot of things that I see interest in you, too, that are a lot of similar things. So like... I've always cut hair ever since like I was 16, 17 or something like that. I started mm -hmm. cutting my own hair. I found a pair of clippers in uh, my mom's house that my cousin, my cousin lived there before my mom. She left the clippers there, just found them. One day, I, I think I was getting ready to start school. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say it might have been my freshman year of high school. Hair just nasty, rugged, right. had, hadn't had a haircut in a long time. And I was like, uh, man... You know what? It's late at night. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make it anywhere to go get a cut tonight. I didn't know anybody to just hit up. Plus, back then it wasn't as common as it is now, where it seems like you can hit up somebody or somebody's cutting at whatever time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm just like, man, let me give it a shot. Like, I just, I, I don't know if I was just feeling too brave or whatever the case was, <laughs> but I did. It didn't turn out that bad, and it kind of just sparked from there. Hey, so I was, some people just got that natural ability sometimes. I mean, I ain't going to say that type of thing, you know what I mean? Because it could have grew up. Right, right, right. Right, right, saying, right could've, because could've I'm, I, it's not something I do professionally, and you are at a totally, totally different level for me to even feel like I, put, I could put myself in any type of conversation like that if I do it or the people that do it every day at least, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, I did it for a while. Friends family people started noticing like oh okay yours looks kind of good man you think you can get me you, right. think you, you think you could take care of me and yeah. i'm like yeah i mean we could try it out at first i was a little iffy but at the same time i felt confident because i felt like i was getting better i was noticing i was getting better with mine and feeling better about it mm -hmm. but uh so the haircutting thing then i see other random things that you post some of your mindset Nas, i see that you like Nas. Nas oh, is yeah. your guy yeah. that's been my guy since i was super young man my uh my older brother mm -hmm. listened to him and i caught on to him early so stuff like that i was just like you were somebody from the jump when i first uh started following i was like okay yeah this is somebody that i can really relate to and i like what he's about i appreciate it yeah yeah but uh so uh i was gonna ask you too i seen you uh just posted that you gave uh haskins a cut i seen the picture mm -hmm. and stuff like that was that today yeah yes. that, i've been cutting his hair off and on for a little bit mm -hmm. but yeah i did i cut it today too gotcha 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 that's why that was gonna be my next question like how long has it been or was it just something new but yeah that's uh it's it's crazy to see what he's uh the kind of draft stock and stuff that he's getting yeah, stuff i hope no. i hope he i hope he goes super high man and that, yeah. to me from what he put out and the way he was playing i feel like he's gonna be nice in the nfl man mm -hmm. I, I don't i don't see why not man i don't see why not his yeah. arm is is nuts man yeah i think he's gonna be excellent gotcha gotcha but uh also, I was going to ask you, too, I don't know how much uh, you, you get into basketball stuff, but you in the brackets or anything right now? Or? Nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, man. But well, I was bracket, in it. The stuff is ridiculous. I was in it, man, and feeling good and looking like I was in the money and mm -hmm. North Carolina lost and mine's busted. It's a, it's a, it's a done deal for me. Yeah, I just, it, I don't even do it anymore. Gotcha, gotcha, it's gotcha. Crazy. And then uh, also just for the people listening and also for you or whatever, something too, everybody I'm sure is aware too with the Nipsey Hustle thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Rest in peace. It's real sad, sad to hear. Like I was telling you a little bit before the podcast stuff too. I, I, I hate to see that because I was seeing with him too, like a lot of the positive stuff he was doing. I was just telling uh my guy Luis that uh seeing a lot of things where he was opening he had like that STEM center. I think he might have had more than one of them. And just so many things that he was doing to try to make his area better and places in uh LA and California and stuff like that better mm -hmm. that were struggling and, and a lot of people get money and start a business or clothing brands or a store like he had or whatever, but they put in places where it doesn't really mean nothing. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it doesn't, right. it, it means something for their pockets, but it, it's not putting anybody else on or bringing anybody else up with him. And I feel like he was doing so much that he was trying to bring up so many people with him. So, uh, just, um, I don't know if that was somebody that was uh, your guy or somebody that you listen to much or whatever, but yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely listened to him a lot. He, he inspired a lot of people. Uh, it just wasn't the average you know, rapper, he had a lot of, his his lyrical content was intense, so it was, it's, it's sad, man, that he's gone. Yeah, I mean, that's what I felt like, and I, he, he wasn't a dude that I listened to a bunch, but uh, I had a friend that was constantly posting him all the time, and posting quotes, lyrics, songs, and just talking about, like, how he helped him model 
the way he was like starting to move to open some businesses for him and his family and stuff like that or whatever. And I was just like, anytime I said that type of stuff, that's similar to like what I was talking about here and what we do with bringing people in here. So it was somebody that I, I had a lot of respect for, even though I don't know him and, and it wasn't somebody that I've always been super familiar with, but just wanted to mention that. Right. But, uh, let's, let's get right into it, man, with you. Uh, so even with the name, with the name, so are you a boxing fan or you just like how that went? Or? Yeah, nah, I've always been a Mike Tyson Gotcha, fan gotcha, sure. gotcha. Yeah, I've seen more and more of him lately. Uh, he has a, a podcast that he does. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I think it's called Hot Boxing. And he, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, he gets on there and he's, he's got like this uh, kind of like somewhat stoner white dude that he gets on there with that's like his boy. Mm-hmm. And But they, uh, I think they, it's be, a lot of that is based off of kind of promoting their ranch thing. They opened up like this... Uh, uh, resort that's like it's like a marijuana resort oh, okay. it's like a weed resort dude. people go and smoke that's all crazy. different kinds of weed and try oils and edibles and all this random stuff and yeah so it, i think he's just uh the name kind of goes hand in hand with trying to promote it but yeah so that's where you picked up the name as you was a big tyson guy yeah i i definitely picked the name up from his old trainer his first trainer and then uh i don't know it just kind of went hand in hand yeah, the way it flowed. So, and I never used the name too much at all in the beginning. And then I just started. I made a logo, and I just started using the name real heavy, and it just stuck. Gotcha. Um, is, the, is it that same logo you use now, or is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think the logo's fire. Yeah. I like. I like how you uh, get got certain stuff made, and it, it's in the background. A lot of the pics and stuff like that. I'm, mm-hmm. To me, I, 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 I would imagine it's purposeful. You know what I mean. Put yeah, to for sure. branding and being smart about it. I just from mm-hmm. the little bit we've been talking just now, I can already see and understand that uh, you got that in you. But uh, also, like, so give us a a story of like where you grew up, how stuff like that. Uh, just siblings. What what kind of stuff was uh what kind of work your parents did things like that just to give people an idea of who you are, where you come from. Yeah, I grew up on the west side. Um, my dad. All I knew of him is that he worked very hard, you know what I'm saying, hard worker. Um, my mom, the same. Uh, my dad owned a a printing company. Okay. And he did uh, home remodeling, too, on the side, which became his first love. And he adopted that business, mostly. So, he's retired now. But, gotcha. Uh, yeah, me growing up. Um, I have three or two sisters, a brother that passed about eight, ten years ago. But, uh, yeah, I still got two sisters. One lives here. One lives in New York. And my sister that lives in New York is also a hairstylist. Gotcha. I was going to ask, did did anybody else get that bug in them? And also maybe anybody else get the uh, entrepreneur bug from your dad, too, of having their own business? Yeah, like my grandmother was a stylist and i just always we i guess we we always watched her do hair or whatever but i just kind of picked it up um just watching my barber was an older gentleman on the west side and um i just always thought i could do it so where, at, where at on the west side where you go it to? was um off of wayne avenue yeah mike Mike's Barbershop, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, that eventually was Mike and Ike's or no? I don't think so. Oh, different no, one? Yeah, th- those dudes are younger than, than than Mike. Okay. I think he he ended up retiring a um, long time ago. Gotcha, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, I was just watching, and I always thought I could do it. And I told my mom, and she bought me a pair of clippers, and I, I cut my hair. I went to school, and nobody thought that I did it. They thought I got it cut somewhere, so then I cut my brother, and they was like, "Man, he really, he really did it." Gotcha. Um, cutting the whole neighborhood, whatever school. So it just I don't know. Some around what age was that? That was about like fourteen, I think. Okay. Yeah, fourteen when I started. Gotcha. That was about the exact same time I started. Then okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's yeah. I mean. Th- I'm I'm always interested to hear people's story on how what got them going and what inspired them, especially in something like that. And uh, to hear that it was like around the same time and you kind of had the same start 
that I did, even though, like I said, I'm not putting myself in the same class as you in any type of way, but uh, just, to, just to hear it and relate, it's cool. But uh, I, I kind of also did the same thing, too, like you were talking about. I got to cut even more and more people. So like I told you, it kind of went to friend, friends and family and stuff like that. But at time, I, it got to a point where I was cutting a decent amount of heads, you know what I mean? It was making me some nice little extra money was the big right. thing that I liked about it. Mm-hmm. Because at the time when I first started working, uh, just getting old enough to work, to work and then get that extra money here and there was really nice. I even had this dude that I was cutting for a while uh, that just passed, uh, rest in peace as well, uh, Johnny Collins, that uh, I was cutting him and he w- he wanted me to cut him every week, every week, every week, which was cool for me being a cat that wasn't a barber to mm-hmm. get somebody that wanted me like clockwork every week. Right. And uh, and he always paid well and tipped well, man. And he would just randomly, a birthday, uh, around the holidays, whatever, throw me a nice chunk of money and stuff for doing it. And I'm just like, oh, this is... This is kind of nice. The only thing that really kept me from it and kept me from like going to school and stuff, I, I can't say the only thing, but one of the big things that kind of kept me back, and I look at it now, a lot of it is excuses, stuff like that. But uh, when I first started doing it, I was super duper skinny. I'm still skinny as shit now, but back in the day, I was real, real skinny, like crazy skinny. And uh, when I would uh, cut like three or four heads in a row, my lower back would just be killing me, mm-hmm. killing me. Yeah. And I was just like, man, I don't know. I think I need to really step up my uh, exercise game or something. I need to well, really that too, it's strengthen. all about having the right tools, too. I mean, you, you think probably so? didn't have a real barber chair. I mean... I eventually got one, but I definitely didn't at the beginning. I was cutting anything. <laughs> yeah, it's me, too. So, I mean, right. we was cutting in bathrooms and outside. It don't matter. Outside, yeah. wherever. You could do it. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, that's basically all I've done all my life was... Cut hair for the most part. I mean, everybody's had little odd jobs, or whatever. But I used to do that for tax purposes. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, uh, I hated so, working any job. Yeah, I mean, I think that's. It seems to be the uh, super common uh, theme for everybody nowadays. Everybody's kind of eyes are getting open to. It's a real possibility that you can really do something you enjoy or something that mm-hmm. you're not punching the clock all the time if you really want to. So yeah. I, I think I think that's getting some some starting to get heavy in uh, people's minds. But uh, so uh, where'd you end up going to school for it? I went to, um, uh, I started the Barber College. It was on, um, what was that? It wasn't the Broad Street one. It was, uh, man, I can't remember it because it was a small school and then they, they got rid of that school and then we had to go to the one on Broad. Okay. And, um, the Ohio State or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, Ohio State Barber School. And um, yeah, I had to do that for a year. It was a complete waste of time. <laughs> you, you, yeah, I have, a, I have a real gripe with the barber schools. I just feel like... Let's hear it, man. Let's hear it. I feel like they're not, they're not teaching those kids that are hungry properly. Okay, there's, get into it. There's like so many little small things to learn. And they're just not teaching him those things. They're teaching you how to pass the test to get your license. That is it. They're so... So they're almost basically just trying to get you to get that curriculum in, is what you're saying? Yeah, and that, and that's it. But there's people that leave the school with their license, and they don't know how to cut hair. I've seen it. They don't know how to I've deal with a the client. They don't know how to deal with the business and that is what should be taught. I mean, as much as those kids pay for that schooling now, they should be taking field trips to to uh, what barber shows. I mean, they could bring people in to help them to learn how to do certain things that they want to do. Those kids don't want to just they want to learn. They yeah. want to learn. When yeah. I go up there sometimes randomly, they bombard me with questions they they are hungry yeah and i mean that makes a lot of sense uh my girl went to uh my wife i should say went to cosmetology school and she cuts hair now she cuts at a at what's basically a barbershop but it's more like one of them uh, men's salons mm-hmm. up in pal and uh even like with her and the little experience that she had i seen a lot of that you know what i mean like i would ask her because i was already cutting hair when she went so i would ask her little random details or all like how they taught you this or she would tell me something like a problem she was having or oh, I can never blend this right, or I can never get this here. Mm-hmm. Or, 
when I do this, it never looks right, this and that, something like that. And I would just be like, well, you just do it like this, or, or I've always done it like this, or this is the way I kind of learned as I was going to snap and stuff. She was just like, oh, yeah, they don't teach us. And I, and I remember asking her at one point, so like, I'm like, so what exactly are they teaching you a lot of time? And don't get me wrong, when you're doing more of the cosmetology thing, I think they teach you some more of the other stuff. But mm -hmm. the kind of gist of it that I got from that and now pairing it with what you're saying was it was like a lot of it was that stuff on like uh, uh, the bacterias and the cleanliness and stuff right. like that, which don't get me wrong, all that stuff is important for it sure. Is. It makes a ton of sense. It is. But at the same time, I but feel it like... it don't take a year to learn that. Right, right. I feel like everything, it should be well-rounded. It should be well-rounded. Yeah. You can learn that in a week. And then also you're practicing it when you're on the floor anyway. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So it don't take a year to learn how to deal with bacteria. or And plus they make sprays now that kill everything. Gotcha. Just spray everything down. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just. It makes a lot of sense, man. And I've definitely ran into the situation like you're talking about too. I have went to a barber that I'm like, when I leave out of the chair or when I go home or whatever the case, I'm just like. Why, what did I just pay for? Or why did I? Why did I even waste my time or whatever? Yeah. And and I, and then also I've seen, especially now with social media, man. You know how it is. You get to see a little bit of everything. But you'll see somebody who's either just getting ready to finish school, just out of school, just into a shop, whatever, some, and post a cut. And you're like, I, I don't know about you. I'm sure for you because I'm just a novice. I'm just somebody who's mm -hmm. done it out of my house for whatever this and that. And uh, and I'll look and say like, your cut doesn't even look done. Right. Or it looks like you really you made some major somebody's way pushed back or yeah, a help. part or or a design is way jagged and or super thick and yep. yeah and I'm just like I get it not everybody's going to be a natural and and to some people I'm sure it's just a job yeah. like that's the weird thing about it is because you would I think you would like to think and I don't know maybe you would definitely know being more in the industry for as long as you have but I'm sure there are people that just maybe a family member was a barber or they thought this was a, a way to have a little bit better work schedule or whatever the case was. And they just go at it like a job right? to where they're like, I'm going to go, I'm going to cut the hair. And it can be so much more than that. See, social media has made it to where everybody feels like they're, they're popular or they're, or they, they have to be so thirsty to post a pic. And, you know, if you're posting a pic, and asking for advice, that's one thing. But if you're posting a pic thinking, this cut is fucking fire, mm -hmm. and it ain't. It ain't. So now you got people looking at it like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know exactly like, what you're saying. <laughs> when you should be asking for assistance. You know what I'm saying? You you see everybody else's cuts. You see the popular barbers, whatever. You see their haircuts. Yours don't look nothing like that. So why are you why are you not trying to get this knowledge to learn? It's 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 out there. You that, know. That's, I mean, I'm I'm willing to help a lot of people. My DMs are crazy with people asking me, you know, how do you do this and how do you do that? And I I just tell them. That's dope, man. And they appreciate it because they tell me that a lot of other barbers don't help or they don't, they ignore them. Yeah, Whatever. which I'm sure a lot of people kind of have that crab in a barrel mentality or like, a, yeah, I'm going to, somebody, I'm going to give all my secrets or tips to somebody that's taking money no, out of my pocket. But there is no secrets. Oh, I know. There is no yeah. secrets. <laughs> you can't cut everybody. Right. If I'm, if I'm There's cutting. There's plenty out here to get. If I'm cutting who I'm cutting, they're coming to me because they love what I do. They're not going to go to somebody else just because he can do the same thing that I do. There's always something that is going to make you different from the next person. It could be your, your, your mentality. It could be our, our conversation. It could be you just like who I am. You know what I'm saying? The cuts yeah. maybe look the same. It don't, none of that matters. Plus we can't cut everybody anyway. Right. We can't do it. So trying to say that <clears throat> I'm going to give you some type of secret or whatever. I, I, and I probably can't even teach what I know in my head. You're going to have to just watch me. Because there is no formula. There is no one, two, three steps. Because everybody's head is different. Everybody's shape of head is different. Everybody's hair is different. You can't just say, all right, now you start here and then you put this guard on, you do this. It's not going to work for everybody. Yeah. I, I love like 
a good three things you said right there. One, right off the bat, like you're saying, there's there's so much out here to get. You know what I mean? There's so many people. The amount of people that need their hair cut because very, very few are like me or like other people that are going to take care of it themselves or try to take care of themselves. I know so many people. I've talked to so many people that said, like, I wouldn't dare. You know what I mean? Not, I, I'm not even going to chance it. Or I tried to do this something one time just with a razor or try to clean my face up and it was a disaster whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a million people that always need to cut. You, like you said, I can't imagine how many barbershops and places at all time the lines are how long and the wait is how long how long the wait is for somebody at your level at your status it's I, I can't even imagine but then like you was talking about too so I, I really like what you said about like heads being different and hair being different stuff like that because the weird thing that I seen too when social media first started going with uh, like YouTube videos or Instagram or whatever but definitely I think early on I was watching on YouTube because it really hadn't hit like the Instagram scene and all that just yet but there were certain barbers that were picking up on like kind of getting a good following, getting more attention in business stuff from mm -hmm. doing like YouTube videos. I would watch stuff trying to learn because yeah. I'm like, I, I, everything I was doing and learning was off the fly of me trying to do it on my own head for the most part. And then once it's spread to friends and this and that. But I started noticing things like that. So it's like some people have random parts of their hair that's like, thin or mm -hmm. like you said the shape of their head it kind of curves out or something like that so if you think you're just going to go in there with this guard and just go past that spot all of a sudden you got a big patch right there right and that's what i noticed like and it was funny it reminded me last night i cut my hair last night and uh i have like uh blonde patches up here at the front like towards the my temples mm -hmm. and if i go the if i would just to try to do like the textbook cut and that that's the thing that made a lot of sense too with you saying like kind of the weird stuff that they teach and not teaching the right way is my girl the thing she went crazy on my wife went on uh in school and out of school whatever is that they would always harp on everything being exactly even mm -hmm. oh it has to be even you have to cut if you're going to cut this short here on this side it has to be here this and this spot and this spot everything needs to be like symmetrical and I'm like, it don't work like that. Like to me, at least, like that's how I felt. Like you want the cut to look symmetrical mm -hmm. for sure, because that's what's gonna make it look right. So one person don't have hair sticking out here and this that whatever. Right. But at the same time, with instances like that where somebody either has thinning hair or has this uh, lighter spot or something like that, you try to cut it just thinking I'm gonna go over this with the guard, like I said, and it just mm -hmm. got a patch. And I and I kind of noticed that last night, and that's what happened to me. I'd go to some barbers. I would try to tell them sometimes. Sometimes I wouldn't think of it. Early on, I didn't really know. And when I leave, I'd be like, I, it looks like it's bald right here. And, it's not. and I think, so that may, led me into the other thing that you said. There's not only is it dope that like somebody can keep coming to you because of the conversation or they respect who you are. And then on top of the main thing being your product and your work and how good you are and things like that. But also when you get into those details, it's like, that's why someone really wants to keep going to the same person. Because then it's like, oh, they know. So, like, you yeah. you know that person's head. You know what to look for. You know how to not mess mm -hmm. it up and, and, and where you're going to, okay, here, I got to do it like this or, and I got to remember. And, and a good barber, I think, for sure remembers those things and really tries to take care of the client and make sure they walk out looking good, not just uh, right. looking textbook or looking even. Well, because when you have, when you have an actual name for yourself and not to be disrespectful to any barbers in the Columbus area, but there's not a lot that have a name for themselves. You know, they known for working at a specific shop, but a lot of them, they don't have a specific name for themselves. Like people know Customato, but they don't know Anton. They don't even know my name. Right. They, I didn't for a long time. Yeah. They just know <laughs> Custom auto, whatever he cuts hair, but they didn't know my my name or who I am a lot of times. But uh, creating that name for yourself and that and that vibe that um, is is it will benefit you because now you care. You know what I mean? You care about your work. You're not just working at some job. And we're we're trying to get through as many cuts as we can get through, get this money, whatever, because some way down the line, one of them haircuts are going to be shitty. <laughs> and that guy is going to say, yeah, man, I got my hair cut at blah, 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 and it was terrible, you know, and then they're not even going to remember who that guy was. He doesn't have a name for himself. 
So there's so many factors that come in to play with that, creating a name for yourself and then creating a demand behind that and then creating a standard with that. So the standard has to be set and you cannot go below it. You either going to make that standard, we're going above it or we're going at it. That's it. And if you do that, I mean, you, you can only be, it's only going to benefit you. Yeah. I mean, to me, it makes a ton of sense because that's how I always felt. And I think that's kind of just in certain people with a lot of different things. So like, whether it be like the way you talk and deal with people, the way you dress, the way you play a sport, the way you do this, where you kind of have that competitive mentality. Cause that's kind of what I think it is. It's very similar to like, Mm -hmm. you want to feel like you're, you're competing at the top or you're, you're close to the top. When I was, when I was like 19, 20, I thought I was the coldest on the planet. Oh man. (laughs) Can nobody touch me? You couldn't touch me. I I I knew of one other barber. And I and I respected that dude. His name was Walls, and he cut everybody. He cut Prince, anybody that came in the city. He cut them. Anybody with a big name. So it was like, I would thought to myself, if my haircuts don't look like his or better, then I ain't doing this. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing. Then. So when I got <laughs> to that level, I just was like, man, can't nobody touch me. Yeah. <laughs> From what I see, man, and what I've been seeing, that's that's the case. I don't think nobody is touching nobody that I see for sure, though. So one thing I wanted to say about that, like right off the jump, that was kind of what where my attention came to you early on on like Instagram. And I don't know if it somebody from the neighborhood or one of G's friends or whoever, uh, your son, one of his friends, somebody that might have posted that they went to you or what the case was, but I came across your profile. I started looking at it. One of the common things that just me being somebody that cut hair casually, cut my own hair, stuff like that, is when people started doing those posts and, and starting seeing like, oh yeah, I can flex on Instagram stuff. And, th- and I'm talking early on, early on, probably like around the time like Instagram was first really hitting because mm-hmm. people have been putting the barber stuff on there for basically the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So when I first started seeing it, I felt like almost every time I was seeing somebody post a cut, it's like what you were saying. I was seeing like, man, but right there, like, oh you don't see that right there. And that's kind of the weird thing too. Like I was thinking about that when you said that earlier. When someone looks at a really good cut or looks at your work and some of the other greats, like, and they see that when there is like a blatant mistake or a blatant thing that's just missed or hasn't been went over or hasn't been blended all the way or whatever the case is, that's something to me that mind blowing. Like, mm-hmm. so why did why is this cut over? Or why did you stop? Unless maybe your cat is still learning and it was already like two hours in and you're like, I got it. Right. I got to throw in the cape. You know what I mean? Right. But at the same time, it's like, so I started seeing all these posts and I'm like, every time I'd see one and granted back then, a lot of your real, real big names hadn't, didn't really seem to get on there yet. Or I just wasn't seeing them. I was just seeing local people and stuff like that. But I was always seeing something where I was like, ah, like I'm, I'm just a at home barber and I wouldn't post that pic. Mm-hmm. because like you said, like I would feel bad about it. Like I'm putting out or showing a product that's not up to the quality to really be trying to flex or trying to be like, oh yeah, look how crispy this is. Look how fresh this cut is, whatever. When I came across yours, I was just like, I don't see nothing. I was like, it's it's like perfection in every, in every pick. Like I really felt like that. I really was like, man, like every cut, everything that I see from you, and then once a video hit on Instagram, I'm like, that's the even clear. Mm-hmm. That's what I like too, because then there were some that I follow, some people that I follow and stuff. Then once a video hit, it was like it kind of knocked them down a little bit because I'm like, oh, like you were taking the the perfect pick of the, <laughs> of the perfect side and the perfect lighting and this mm-hmm. and that, whatever, and right. it always made it look like you were the dope, one of the dopest barbers. But this video came through. And now you circle around the head or or the person you're trying to take the video of turns their head real quick or something. You're like, right. hold on a second. But when I was seeing yours, I'm just like, man, this the work is flawless. I appreciate that, I, man. I I'm really serious, do. man. I really that's that's how I felt. And I still like when I see it now, I'm every time I'm like, 
it makes sense. It makes sense why your brand is what it is. It makes sense why the names that are coming to you now want to come to you. It makes sense why people always return. It's funny. I was even uh, reading uh, your reviews on Style Seat. So I don't know if you still mess with them or. No, I don't mess I with Style Seat. Yeah, I, I, and I knew you did at one at one time or whatever. And I uh, so I was looking on there, and it was funny. Like I saw so many different reviews of people just saying like what we're saying, like the work is flawless. I, some of the cool things that I've seen that I really like too is what you were talking about is people just saying like other things too that just meant a lot to them personally. Like he's down to earth. He's real. He's this and that. He makes sure. I saw people saying they, oh, I, he, he takes the same care he takes on these football stars and stuff. Mm-hmm. Same time and effort and attention to detail he gives them, he gives to me or to my right. son or this and that. Which, see, that's the misconception, man. People think that just because, you know, I cut certain people you know from zeke to i mean zeke is my main that's my main client like outside of uh you know being normal i mean he's a superstar right so So people don't know we're talking ezekiel elliott cowboys running back yeah it's 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 huge and it's just like i was cutting hair before i met zeke (laughs) right right, you know what i'm saying like so don't get it twisted like like, you know, he's the start of my, who I am. Like, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I was custom model before I met Zeke. So Zeke seen it in me that I could do what I could do for him. And he chose to keep me while he's in the league because he cares about how he looks. And, I mean, I'm out there at football season. I'm out there every week. Every week, man, cutting this guy. And then the off season, it's like every two weeks. So it's like he stays fresh. Yeah, oh, people see it, man. People see that he stays fresh because, I mean, I see posts about his cuts and random stuff where people are just going crazy over him. But And then even I seen the thing where ESPN was talking about it. Yeah, well, I mean, he's just bigger than life, man. He just really is. And, I mean, never would I did I think that I would be, like, cutting hair for the – the top running back in the league. You right, know what right. I mean? Like, that's what's what he is. He's the... Oh, yeah. The numbers Let's be lie. honest. He's yeah. the top running back in the league. And this is like, you know, it's a it's a, it's a a cool thing because a lot, of, a lot of different things come with that. You know, the exposure. It ain't just money. Money is... <clears throat> in that situation, money is really nothing about it. It's, it's good money, but it's like the exposure that you get and opportunities that you get from other things is, is where it's at. You never know where you're going to be. you never know what's going to happen. And people think that they're all ready for, to be a celebrity barber, but it's a lot that comes with it. You know what I mean? Like I've never told Zeke, no, never. He, he, he hits me. I mean, sometimes he hit me like, like right now, let's say he hit me, right? And he'd be like, I need you in the morning. That's short notice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is that something that happens or close yeah, to? Yeah, it happens okay. all the time. Perfect. Then go ahead. Like, he hit me like, I mean, it's times where he'll hit me and it'd be like one in the morning. And he'd be like, I need you. I need you in the morning, man. And I'm like, how am I even going to make this <laughs> flight happen? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it, it's not just something easy to do. I mean, you got to be on your toes. You got to be ready. For all kinds of things. I've been in video shoots uh, from ESPN, Nike. I mean, all kinds of, of situations. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I so, feel like I saw a lot of that from you. I've seen you post stuff like, I think maybe did you get, I mean, because as often, and it seems like you're doing it for everything. It seems like you did like the ESPYs and uh, oh, yeah. I think you did something for Madden one time and a lot of things like that, which I thought was dope right off the bat to see that from you and to see that like, for you to get to experience some of those things just from being a barber. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, like, not to dumb it down or, like, uh, try to say it like it's something light or it's it's not a great profession. It's not. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But to have those kind of experiences and go see some of those things and go see some of those things behind the scenes and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. As a barber, who, who would imagine that? 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know what I mean? Or, or coming up or going to school or whatever. Like, okay, one day I'm going to be 
getting somebody ready for some kind of red carpet or or doing something for like a like you say like Nike or ESPN yeah. or Madden or something like that. And that's the thing too. You're cutting hair in wherever you're wherever setting you're cutting at your shop, your home, your whatever. You're cutting people's hair and you think you're the shit, right? You're cutting hair. And you should. Yeah. You should be very, very confident in what you do. But when that when that client hits that red carpet or that that video shoot or that, that's when you really find out who you are. Because when they hit that and you yourself looking at it like, like, man, I think I could have maybe did a little better right there. Or that's like when Zeke first started. Now, when he when he went to the draft, I went all out. I I put my best foot best product on in the head. damn stew, bro. I I mean, I did that shit. So there was other times though that you know you see things because now you're on sets. So it's like they got they got makeup, they got this. So you gotta be ready for certain things. You know what I mean? How you gonna do the lineup and then this lady's coming back behind doing the makeup. Oh, okay. So you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. So things have to be done a certain way and you got to be on point. So I learned real quick Mm. because like I said, I care about how things look, your name, because people are waiting on me to fall. You know what I mean? Even in my own city. Oh, I'm sure. Like, I mean, people I don't even know. I I, I see you post about that from time to time and I hate to get on the negative or, or give attention to it. But but we can since, definitely get into it. We'll see, and that's why I want to though, is because I feel like when we do things like this, that's what we want. You know I mean, you, you and the people that come on here, we want you to rant and give your side of things and, and the things mm-hmm. that uh, you really want to let people know or get off your chest. And I feel like I see you post about that, like every so often. It's like you'll say something about somebody coming at you and this and that, and I'm thinking like maybe just because it's not me or or I don't know, but I just I'm like. I wanna. I wanted to ask you, like, who is who or why and what? What yeah. is, do you feel like? It's just haters. Is it just it some is. of those haters? And, and nine times out of the ten, I don't. Well, ten out of the ten, I don't even know these people. I don't know them at all. And if they truly met me, they wouldn't feel how they're feeling. People think I'm cocky. I'm this because I call myself Customado to God. Mm-hmm. I can call myself whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You prove that I'm not. You prove that I'm not right. the God of barbering in this city. <laughs> you I prove like it. it. Prove it that I'm not. You know what I'm saying? To me, I said what I said. I am who I am. I picked that name, and that's who I am. I, I set a standard for myself. I follow it. I'm willing to help anybody that is that is that wants my help. I never turn nobody down. I never say, oh, yeah, man, you know, I could give you a couple little things, but, you know, you might have to pay for this or do that. I've never done it. You ain't never seen me on YouTube. I've never done that. I, I haven't done anything for for gains of money. Right, right. Like trying to uh, sell classes or, yeah. or get and I pro- could. profit off of the, profit and off of the knowledge that you're and giving maybe, people. And maybe y'all will, but it'll have to be on a certain level and it had have to be done right that people are really going to learn and take something from this class i'm not going to do that cookie cutter bullshit that i see all these barbers doing they they get into this zone where they're just these popular barbers and whatever this dude says these people are just eating it up you know what i mean okay you use that guard okay Mm -hmm. i've never seen that guard before who gives a fuck about a guard (laughs) okay there's haircuts that you can do with no guard. No guard. Yes, sir. Absolutely no guard. And it'll look way better. And it might be easier for you to do it. But but they don't teach that because they're bound by a clipper company. And those clipper companies have guard systems. Mm, and they gotcha. all have to, you know what I mean? I'm not bound by anything. So if I teach somebody, it, it might be on a one-on-one or it might be a class of five people. But they're going to learn something that day for sure. 
man, that's that's to me that's the dopest content and that's the the stuff that people don't want the most. And it's crazy for you to say what you were saying earlier about how like how many other little details that you wish people were learning and that you try to kind of give and stuff that that might be the perfect thing for you if you're doing something consistently to where then you feel like you can slowly get out that massive amount of information because that's what it sounds like I'm hearing from you is like there's a lot like there's a lot to learn that people are not getting and if they're not going to get it in that year or they're not going to get it in these little BS 30 day classes or whatever it is of some of the cookie cutter shit you're seeing online or whatever Mm -hmm. then maybe it is they need something from someone like you on a consistent basis that's leveling them up leveling them up leveling them up I had to learn so much stuff on my own because I've always cut on my own. I've never really been in a big shop or a shop that I've owned and worked with a bunch of people. Like back in the day, my cousin had a shop and I worked, I worked with him. So I'm thinking that was maybe like a year, but. And was that like fresh out of school or was that like a little bit after? No, I was, I was well out of school, (coughs) well out of school. Um, been cutting for you but I always just like to cut by myself I felt like I got the most out of it you know you can you can work with people and there might be a good guy over here might be a guy that really needs some help but for some reason you kind of pick up these little weird things that your people beside you are doing and I never wanted to do that like picking up bad habits yeah okay okay. bad habits or Maybe like now you slipping a little bit because, you know, you think your cut looks so good, but that's just because these dudes are so shitty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like working by myself, I always had to just figure it out. I know how I want this to look. Now let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I like what you're saying too of like, okay, so then that puts you at, the the bar that I'm holding myself to is yeah. my bar. Yeah. And you if and if that. I know that I'm not accepting anything less than greatness, then I will be a lot less likely to be like, oh, at least it looked better than dude that just stepped out of so and so's chair beside me. Right. Got you, got you, got you. And you know, with with the times changing and and um, equipment changing, things have got better. You know what I mean? Better, easier to do certain things to make them look certain ways it's right what do you think about a lot of that stuff like what what's what's your uh i know it's like a that's a broad spectrum and that's a broad uh question but like what's your thought on a lot of the enhancers and, and tools and stuff like that so like mm-hmm. i don't know about a ton of them because i'm like i've said i'm not in it every day i'm not an actual barber that's doing it yeah. every day and cutting and in the scene and especially i think even in the shops a lot of people see more that's a lot of place where I would imagine a lot of barbers learn about the next big thing or people coming in and selling stuff to them or the right. barber beside them using this. But but I know a little bit like the, about the fibers and mm-hmm. the pencils. And it's funny how like I feel like it all kind of started from seeing like uh, people doing the Beijing and just uh, getting real, yeah. real, real bad uh, jobs like uh, people's beards and everything looking mm-hmm. painted on, blowing up on memes yeah. and stuff like that. And See, then, Beijing, Beijing is just, it's a dye. It's a very harsh dye, but... It is. It's a dye, and even the even that Beijing dye can be done in a right way. It just was misused many times because people would put it on, they wouldn't wash it off, and it just be black, super blunt, black, sharp, whatever. Doesn't look natural. But like a lot of the enhancements, far as uh, fibers, different dyes, they're all good. They're all good. It's just. They have to be used the right way or they're not going to look natural. And you want the cut to look natural over everything. Sure. Now, fibers are, let's say you was on a, a video shoot or a photo shoot. Fibers are excellent for that because they're not going to last. It's just for this moment. It's uh, for that picture, for this video. And it's going to make everything look sharp, nice, whatever. I mean, people can overdo that too. But just if you don't overdo things and do it to where it looks natural, it all it's all cool to use those things. It took me a while to even remotely use some of those things. Because 
I just was like, I'm better than that. Your pride yeah. is what I was going to yeah, say. You know what yeah. I mean? Just being yep. prideful, like I'm, I'm, I'm better than that. I don't need that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't need it. But it's like, let's say your client has low spots, missing areas in the front of his lineup, the sides, whatever. You can enhance those to where on this picture, he looks great. And he's going to love you for it. And it's not overdone. It looks natural. And it's cool. But, yeah, people just have misused the, I mean, they got people spraying in on the entire fade now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that's just, to me, going too far. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I'm know? sure as everybody does, I see some crazy and there's, stuff. And there's people IG. that that will say that I'm, I'm uh, wrong for that because... It's in social media, to me, if you are presenting a look that is fake, then the person that comes to you and sits in the chair and says, I don't want none of that stuff, just cut my hair. And now that haircut looks nothing like the enhanced haircut. And I'm not talking about just en- enhancing the line. I'm talking about you can spray the whole fade. You know what I mean? Now your blend doesn't even look like what you might put on someone without using it. And that's that's the reason why some people are going to lose clients, you know, and they're going to have to use enhancements on every single haircut. Which ultimately it sounds like what you're getting at. It makes it harder on them too. Yeah. Because then it makes them have to do more work for every cut to try to make it look decent because they don't know what they're doing and that's the only way they can get it to look halfway good or halfway like there's what they're putting out there for sure. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I, 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 it's funny that you say like uh, your pride wouldn't let you and stuff. Like that's kind of how like – so I wanted to dabble with someone when I first started seeing – random different things and like i even bought the fibers but i never used them because i had a couple dudes that i was cutting that had like the receding hairline Mm -hmm. in the corners or whatever but it was still kind of there to where i felt like you could put the fibers in and it would just fill it in or hold or stick there or whatever but at the same time i knew like what you were saying for things like that it's kind of like it's basically temporary anyway so it's only going to be for basically almost like that day right you know what i mean or maybe even a few hours wash it or whatever sweat where it's gone yeah 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 the the best thing to use would be a good dye that was was uh it looked natural and you could use it sparingly that would last maybe three to five days gotcha so is there something i mean i'm sure a lot of i'm being honest i think a lot of barbers are going to tune into this because of the respect that you hold so is there something like what could you give somebody like a I know you probably don't want to say a specific brand or anything. Is that kind of what you're getting at there? Like that you don't. Yeah. There's, there's like all kinds of airbrush machines. Now there's cordless airbrush machines. You just put the dye into that machine, dilute it a little bit. You know what I mean? And it'll come out in a, in a fine spray, but it'll, it'll look natural. Okay. You can make it look more natural by instead of just, Dipping a toothbrush or a brush inside of some dye and pasting it on the hair, and then you know it just it it doesn't look as natural as some of the um, the airbrush machines. Okay, yeah, and I mean, I guess if they're doing cordless ones and all that, it's even just getting more yeah. convenient too, which is nice. But uh, something I wanted to get back into because uh, we kind of fast forward really quick and stuff like that. So. I felt like the, the, the first bigger name that I seen you cutting was even before Zeke. I seen you cutting Braxton before I seen you cutting mm-hmm. Zeke. And I don't know, was that kind of like the first big Columbus yeah. name or no? Yeah, Braxton, okay. definitely. And he's the one that really got me started in cutting everybody else. Gotcha. That's what it seemed like from the outside looking in. Yeah, because once, once I started cutting Braxton on a regular, and I started cutting Braxton like immediately as soon as he got, even before... He got to college. Uh, D. Miller was a guy that brought him to me, which is um, um, he used to play for OSU and Mm -hmm. he played in the league for about a year or two. But uh, he brought him to me 
And um, I was cutting his hair ever since. And people started seeing his haircut. And then the rest of the players wanted to get cut. So around that time frame when Braxton being in college, I, I probably cut a little bit of all those players. Yeah, I saw a lot of the post as they were going through. And that's kind of – it was it was what I was seeing too. It was like – when the Braxton thing really hit, it's crazy the the pool that Ohio State players have around here in the first place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as like so many people look up to them, and then also they are like uh, the stars in a, in a major way for a team that or a city that doesn't have your major pro sports teams and things like that. It's like those guys are larger than life, yeah. and so many people just want what they have or want to do things the way they do. And them. I never knew that 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 you know that many people would care okay. about that because to me. You know, I'm cutting them just like I cut anybody else. But it's like, that's when I started realizing this little side hate that I was getting, you know what mm. I mean, from other barbers. Like, oh, well, I cut his hair before. Or I cut this guy before, you know what I mean? You know, why is he cutting him? It's like, that's none of my business. I don't I don't know why you're not cutting him anymore. Or well, it's, it's none of my business. My job is to do what I do. So... Um, I just never knew that people cared. Yeah, well, and it's weird. That it's, that's a weird situation too, because it's like, it's not like I can already see from you. It's not like you're the, you're a guy that was going at people saying like, "Hey, you got to lose your barber and come get with me." This and that, blah blah. blah. Yeah, like, that's that's doesn't make sense. Yeah, and and no, I've and, always preached to a person if they're happy where they're going, then they need to stick with that guy, because trying to find another barber or shopping around. It's hard on your hair <laughs> because you never know what you're gonna what get. You're gonna walk out if you're happy with that barber that you're that you're with, you need to stick with that guy. You know, he's doing something right, he's making you happy. Stick with that guy. Don't go to the to the next guy because you hear that he's popular or you heard that he cuts Braxton Miller. Like it's it doesn't make sense. You know? Oh, definitely. I get what you're saying for sure, cause and it's funny you say hard on your hair with a smirk, like I said, because I mean Especially, like I said, uh, if you go somewhere and put your money out and walk out of the chair, walk out of the shop, whatever, and feel like you made a mistake, that's a that's a rough feeling, especially coming from a guy like me. Like, I was always somebody who cared about my hair and stuff. I think that's probably what led to me cutting and stuff like that. But uh, it's like, man, like, it hits twice as hard. It hits twice as hard. Like, oh, that's, man. That's a lot of the reason how I know um, certain barbers, even. Like, people come to me, and they'll be like, yeah, man, I was going to blah, 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 and I just wasn't happy, so I seen your work, and I thought I'd check you out. Oh, and by the way, um, they don't like you at that shop. That's crazy, man. And I'm like, I don't even know them. I wonder if a lot of it, do you think a lot of it is because you're not in a shop? So they're, like, envious, and they feel like... uh... Yeah, well, a lot of, I hear it all the time, not a real barber. Oh, you know, okay. I cut in a basement, I cut in a garage, I cut wherever, and it's just like, <laughs> you know, in Columbus, we already get a bad rap of not knowing how to cut hair. That's what people think. Really? That in Columbus or Ohio, period, the barbers aren't really seasoned. They're not. They don't know what they're doing, and for you to disrespect what I'm doing and what I've done for all my life is just sick to me. When, Especially when you're probably putting on a lot of people in a, in an offset way. But man, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Since Instagram started, I know for a fact that I've influenced hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. Because I, I seen it. When Instagram first started and, you know, we didn't have that many followers, so we wasn't getting the likes or whatever, or we, did we even know anything about likes or whatever? Who cared? We were just posting a picture, and then our family was seeing it or whatever. But it's like the things that I was doing in a video or pictures, I know a lot of barbers in my city was not doing mm-hmm. because those are things that I picked up when I was young because my guard broke. Now I don't have a guard. So I got to do certain things with my clippers to make this haircut work now. 
And I know for a fact they wasn't doing. And the, and the look of the haircut. You know what I mean? I know for a fact they wasn't doing. So for me not to get the respect is what makes me sick. And it's like if they just took the time to talk to me and we sat down, I could learn something from them. And I definitely know that they can learn something from me. That's why I thought bringing, on, bringing you on here, especially after seeing some of those posts and things you saying that would make so much sense. Because that's one of the best things I like about this is that people get to see who the person is more and mm -hmm. really get an idea like, okay, they might think, like you said, you're this cocky persona online and you're the, the God and this and that. And this dude, he's got to be an asshole and this and that. And the, mm -hmm. But then they hear you talking here and they're like, oh, he's saying he's, a, he's up to help whoever wants to ask. And the only he reason why spread. I act like that and I put it out there and I was doing that is because I'm trying to put on for this city. You can't even tell me how many barbers are doing what I'm doing. I'm I'm a true to life celebrity barber. I cut a guy that is in the NFL and on a constant basis, I'm cutting his hair. Nobody else is cutting his hair. He's not going to somebody in Dallas while I'm not there. I cut him personally. So I'm just trying to show you that this can be your life if that's what you want it. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? The best thing that you can do is to put on for this city and have a busy shop and make money and everybody is happy with what you're bringing to the table. Everybody can't be a celebrity barber or whatever. And that's just, that's just what I'm doing right now. And I'm move, I'm trying to move in different venues also, but my, my whole thing of that, that's for, that was for other cities. That wasn't even for, this city to disrespect Okay, me. yeah, it's not like you're flexing on the people yeah, here in the I'm city. Flexing, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm flexing on the other cities like, yo, we in Columbus. This is what we doing. You know what I mean? Y'all supposed to have my back. Right, right, right. <laughs> Y'all supposed to have my back. I'm not hating on you. Yeah. I don't yeah, even true, know you. True. Yeah. I The thing I like about it too, though, and, and why I, it's harder for me too to, to see where a lot of that hate and stuff would come from is because it's like, in a lot of ways, I feel like people don't realize that you're like I said, putting other people on here because now, to me, it, from the outside looking in, it makes me feel like the other barbers, and, and if they're nice enough and they really put out the, a, a quality product, then they can do what you're doing in a way, you know what I mean? Or they can get headed down that path or something if they really put in the time, put in the effort, and, and, and take cues from what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, a lot of the stuff that I have seen and the way you went about it, I'm like, I feel like people could use it as a blueprint. They're not going to be you because they don't have the same hands. They ain't got the same time and this and that, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they can be themselves right. putting out a high quality product that in turn helps their business grow and at least get in a different direction to where at least they're getting some more freedom or bringing in some more money, getting some more attention, whatever. maybe getting a sponsor, whatever it is, by watching you, by learning mm -hmm. from you. Because you're really, just by showing what you're doing, you're you're laying it out for him. You know what I'm saying? Without even having to, like you say, do a video or do a step by step. I'm somebody, like I said, that's not even doing it every day and this and that, and just watching from the outside that sees like, oh, there's people that if they have their license, they could be picking up on some of what he did to get where he's at mm -hmm. and what he's doing now that is furthering his his product, his his name, the brand, all that type of thing. You know what I mean? Right. And and for them to Instead, just try to hate or tear you down. I guess that's probably, like I said, almost like a crabs in a barrel mentality or just someone that maybe just grew up from a family or someone close to them that kind of always fed them that, that mentality or that right. way of thinking of you got to tear the next person down to boost yourself up. So, I mean, maybe you're not going to escape all of that, but I definitely think something like this will be dope for people to really see like He's not this guy. And even for you to just say that you're not flexing on the people in the city or trying to talk them down by saying you're the God or you're the best, that, that makes them yeah, no, shitty or whatever the, the case the is. Instagram is worldwide. They need to understand that. Oh, yeah. If you, if you cut in your neighborhood 
and you got a barbershop in your neighborhood. That's all you know. You just know that neighborhood. I'm trying to be worldwide. And it's possible. There's people doing it. By the people that I know and the things that I'm that I'm capable of in that realm. So I've I've never confined myself to this neighborhood thing. Even when I was cutting in my home in my basement. I I had people coming from all over the place because of Instagram. People was coming from Vegas. I had a guy come from Vegas and I'm thinking like, oh, so, so you know somebody in Columbus? Like, why are you, you know, why'd you come to Columbus? He's like, I just came to get a haircut. That's nuts, man. And I'm like, what? And he was like, I was like, so what are you about to do? He's like, I'm about to go back to Vegas. Hmm. I'm like, I was like, <laughs> dude, that's crazy. I had to feel great though. Had to feel yeah. great. <clears throat> Excuse me, because it's like never in your in your in your wildest dreams will you believe that. You know what I mean? He's an average guy. You know what I mean? It ain't like he had a concert that night. He actually came there for that. He knew nobody. Did that did that put a, a fire in you some more too, or it kind of really spark things? Definitely. That that's that common thing that I hear Definitely. a lot of people we bring on here and, and people that are in business and or trying out different ventures. It's like when something like that hits that really, like you said, it's one of those never in your wildest dreams moments. Mm -hmm. It's like it lights another fire. Like, oh yeah, okay. This, I'm on the right path. And I really, it, it's time to go harder, push harder. Right. Yeah. That's that's dope, man. That's real dope. I, I like hearing that for something sure. Something just came to me thinking about this show. I'm like, this show could be doper if I could smoke a cigar. <laughs> And you had people calling in. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we, we can do this. Honestly, if you want to do like something where we do this every once in a while. I mean, mm. you're like you, you said, you're crazy busy. I get it. I get it a thousand percent. But we right. could get we could definitely get to that point. And, and if, if people could call in and say, hey, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that do have those questions. And it sounds like you want to give some answers. And you yeah, want for sure, man, we could make something happen if you're for if you're sure. interested. So we'll talk about that for then sure. It's like you're getting viewpoints from, you know, everywhere. Because mm -hmm. like even when you're talking, you know, people are like, well, I don't, hold on. What he say? I don't really like what he said. Explain that. You know what I mean? And or they just want more details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they Whatever. just want more details of what, what you were just talking about because they, they're thinking specific to a specific cut mm -hmm. or doing something for a photo shoot or doing this or doing that where they're like, okay, hold on, what was that thing you were saying about the makeup and this and that? And blah, blah. Right. So, I mean, I definitely that makes a lot of sense for and sure. And we're human beings. There's not a script right here. Right, right. We're just talking. That, that, hey, that's why I love this the most, so, man. <clears throat> whatever comes out of my mouth is coming. I'm, and I'm being real... Lenient today, <laughs> honestly, right? You know, just because I've been a, I've been in a different vibe. You know what I mean? Like, as far as all the hating stuff or whatever, like I just like people that are um, in different walks of life and different positions in their life. They always tell me like, "Bro, let that go, let that go." But I could see if it was like people in another city you know what i mean but when it's people in your own city yeah. you're just like i could really like i feel like we should be get, we should get together yeah you know what i mean yeah and do something in columbus you know what i mean on this on this whole barber the the vibe the there should be a bigger just so many barber shops here oh yeah so many of them and <clears throat> the point of people even saying my name in these barbershops is amazing to me. And I, and they don't know that I greatly appreciate it. I do. I honestly greatly appreciate that people are mentioning Customato in a barbershop that they don't even know me. They don't know me at all. They see Instagram, the pictures, whatever, or whatever I'm doing. It, it amazes me. Do you get some of the tags or the mentions sometimes that make you feel good, man, or, or make you really like? Yeah, the tags that people get. I get, I get young barbers that they do a haircut and they tag me in the haircut because they want my opinion, they want my viewpoint on it. So what I do is I hit them in their DM mm, and I tell them, "Yo, 
good cut, you could do this and you can do this. And I think you might like that cut even better. And they like appreciate that so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Because, because it's just a helpful, quick little helpful thing to do. Yeah. And instead of going out of your way on that on their pick to to uh comment and and get at it to where someone might be like, oh, they see that and then look at it like all oh, yeah, the he's, disrespect for something. Yeah, or for them to see like and think that like, okay, because you gave them some little tips, they're more there's you know how it is. There's the people that are gonna take that as oh nah, he's missing stuff or he ain't really got it or he mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So you're going there's, about it super <clears throat> respectful. There is uh there's barber pages, right? Like barbershop connect, there's mm -hmm. there's different barbershop uh pages. And sometimes they post people's work. Well, they post people's work all the time. But sometimes I feel like those pages are being disrespectful because they post people's work that they know for a fact that this cut isn't the best. So then now you're getting comments from all these hating ass barbers like, man, you should give up. You need, you need to throw mm, your clippers away. You're trolls. fucking trash. Like, and then for that page to not say nothing under them comments or block those people, that just lets me know that sometimes y'all just doing this shit. For just the to, attention. Yeah, just the attention or it's, 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 it's disrespectful. It makes sense. It's a hard thing. With that, my opinion kind of on that is, is a little bit 50-50 because it's like, in a way, maybe some of the critique is good for them, and some of it is like maybe they need to know if they make it to a certain level, it's going to come with that kind of hate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, if it's if Which it's you helpful. don't want it to. You don't want it to. Yeah. But at the same <clears> time, like I hear a lot of uh, the big name people kind of will constantly say like, don't read your comments or... Or or ignore the or ignore ignore the BS ones. Well, I'm saying like the people that are at a massive yeah. We'll see. And that's it's funny that you say you read all your shit because I want to know who's saying what. Yeah, yeah. Well, and at the same time, the people at the most successful, especially off of their brand and and online stuff, are the ones like Gary Vee and other people that say I read every comment and I reply to a crazy amount and this and that blah blah. But what I'm saying more so like. The people that say don't read the comments or don't read the negative comments or don't pay too much mind to them is sometimes they're saying like once you start hitting certain levels, you know that there's people that are going to hate just because they're throwing rocks at the throne. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's probably a lot of what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? It's like, how can I try to tear them down to make them every, because somebody's in my ear saying, oh, you see what's his name's cutting so-and-so now or you see he's doing this or right. he ain't shit. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they just want to be like, oh man, I can... I'm I'm this I'm that whatever and like we said trying to tear it down that way so I, you might have a different opinion on it but to me I feel I feel like what could they really do about it you know what I mean what are they really mm -hmm. gonna do maybe if they say something then that person if it's a troll they're just gonna start trolling barbershop connect they're gonna start making comments oh you're you're in your feelings or this and that blah blah, blah. so mm -hmm. <coughs> well I mean it's tough either they way put the, they put it out there because they say. We are displaying other barbers' work. This is what our page is for. Our page is for display barbers' work and show attention to that barber. It's not to tear them down. It's not if you're gonna give the criticism, let it be in the right way that the guy can look at it and be like, Oh yeah, okay, I understand that or I see that and they learn from it. They're not gonna learn nothing by <clears throat> You just trashing them. Yeah, trashing them. I get it, man. It's, it's it's a tough situation with social media. You know and what I mean? Just, and I've never done it. I've yeah. never got I've never got a part of it. And I always wonder why people care so much to be on Barbershop Connect. I'd be like, who cares? It's not gonna get you nothing. Yeah, you gotta figure it's probably It's not gonna make you any money. Yeah. It's probably well, maybe some people think it do, and maybe some people have used it to uh to like spin or spawn their little 15 seconds of fame or something. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Of saying like, then they repost it and then maybe it gets them a little bit more attention or they tag this or tag that. So, I mean, it's like I said, that whole situation is tough because this whole social media era and the way people use it and the way you're going to have your people always that just go in there. 
one thing that I thought you were going to say that I always think about and I hear random people say is like, man, who has enough time or hate in their blood just to go on other people's stuff talking shit all the time or making negative comments and right. saying like uh, bad things or trying to hurt like go hurt people's feelings or go at people's neck yeah. that they don't know. It's like you don't have enough to do in your own life or like positive things to say to your family, friends, whatever. They to- probably don't. They really don't have the time. <coughs> that is that is their time. Right, right. Yeah. That, that's their I time. mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's what they do. That's just the type of people they are. It probably is. And like I said, a lot of times it's probably coming from a, a family that's that way or them and all their boys are that, that type or, or people, all their friends are the type to sit around and do that type of thing and really uh, just go at people. And that's that's one of their hobbies is a sad thing. I see that in people. Like people have a hobby of talking down on people or talking negative. And it's like, that's not going to get you anywhere. That's not the way to go in life and and business or just in trying to be happy or trying to, you know what I mean? Do the right thing with your family and friends and all that. It's like sitting around and talking down on people isn't going to ever give you anything. Right. It's never going to it's never going to have a positive return. Yep. But uh, one of other things I wanted to get into and stuff too, as we were talking about it, like, so you really seen things blow up from like the Braxton Zeke era. That's mm-hmm. where things really started, like just the was the social media thing a, a huge part of that where like it just maybe followers start coming at the same time and all that Man. type of thing so like it was just hitting yeah a lot of followers <clears throat> from from Braxton and um I remember I cut uh um Jared Solinger okay um and he told me he said uh I'm gonna post this picture and I'm gonna tag you and he said, T- turn off your notifications. <laughs> and I was like, why? Like, what's the big deal? Bro, thousands and thousands of, I probably got like <clears throat> 3,000 followers off of that post. And that's when I was just like, whoa, like I need to watch what I'm doing on here. You know, when I post a pic, I need to love it. I need to because a lot of people are seeing this. Okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it started giving me that thought process of being smarter about things. Yeah, like just everything you do. But then, shit, Instagram's been going for a while now. Like people just, people just say whatever, do whatever, post whatever. Just, it's just a part of life now. Yeah, but I I do see in a lot of people, and it makes a lot of sense that you say that, that for you, it's kind of, it seems as it's one of your main tools, honestly, right? Yeah. Instagram is a a big tool for you. It's a huge tool, so you can show people and show yourself what you're doing. Right. what What you're accomplishing. You know what I mean? Like, you're taking a flight to Miami. Just to cut somebody's hair. You know what I mean? A young barber can look at that and say, man, I want to do that. You can. You can. You just figure out the best way that this might be obtainable in your life and make it happen. If that's what you want to do. Like I said, it's not for everybody. Everybody can't be a celebrity barber or cut these people that are in the league or doing movies. and It's not for everybody. I think it's crazy. I think a lot of people would like to hear that you didn't say... So, like, I kind of expected you to come on and say, like, go put your time in, in a shop first and really do this and do that and whatever. Which, granted, maybe you mm-hmm. still say that or you say that is the right path for some people. But I also like that you said, like, hey, maybe the shop's not for you. It wasn't for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that gives people even more of a spark of like, if they're feeling that way, but they felt like, man, I got to do this shop thing and I got to kind of put my time in. And Well, the, the laws of being a shop owner and, and people that work in a shop are probably going to be changing like soon. So... I mean, who knows what's going to transpire. All I know is I've been doing it my way for as long as I can remember. So this is a question for me that I'm sure a lot of barbers have too. 
So what kind of troubles have you ran into with like laws and things like that going? Because if you've been doing it this long, I feel like you almost had to have bumps in the road or things. I really haven't. Really? Okay. Which has been amazing. Yeah. I really haven't. I've been, I have, I have cut in a hood. I've lived in a hood before, right there off of uh, uh, Broad and like Lechner. Like I've been, I'm talking about hilltop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the hood, mm-hmm. crackheads, um, street walkers. I've cut on my front porch. Police out there. Police asking me, can they get next? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's never been a problem. There's never been a problem. Nobody cared. Nobody cares if you're cutting in a shop or not. I've had people come to me and say, man, I'm glad you're in the shop because I don't like all that, you know, all the people around and, mm, okay. you know, the different conversations. And, you, you know, it's people that, that work in shops and they're not doing everything up to standard anyway. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah. like <clears throat> people used to respect what I do because they know you coming to my house. So it's going to be chill. You know what I mean? Right. Ain't going to be craziness going yeah, on there I'm because you're not vibe. right. You're not going to let craziness go on inside your own home. Right. So people ain't got to deal with. I know what you mean. And for a lot of people that don't know, I mean, I guess. There probably are some people that don't know and aren't familiar. They ain't been to a crazy barbershop and stuff like that. Sometimes you go to a shop and it's like they just let people in there talking crazy, whatever, run their mouth, people getting arguments, this, that, the other. When I knew that people did not care is when women were coming to me. Now, you got to think, a woman don't know me at all, right? She just sees me on Instagram. So either she hit my Instagram and asked for a cut or she hit the scheduling app and got the cut, but she came to my house. So she got to be feeling comfortable by seeing the pictures, seeing whatever, or people just be like, I don't give a fuck what's going on over there. I'm cut. I'm getting a haircut by him because he looks like he knows what he's doing. Right. Right. So people don't <laughs> care as much as what people think. Like you have to be in a barbershop. You can go rent out, a little building and just start cutting hair. I don't know what the laws are going to be five years from now. (coughs) They might not be nothing. You might just be uh, filling out your tax purposes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Calculating up how much you made in a year and, and do the taxes that way. Well, I don't know. That was part of my question. And part of what I've always wondered and, and thought too, is like, I'm like, so how did you always, have to maintain that or or deal with uh, whether it be like state boards or anything like you don't have to do that because you don't have a shot or how does that work or or you just claim it out do you have I'm you always sure. claimed taxes as a barber yeah. as a and does that bring any of that attention or checks or anything like that yeah i've always just did my taxes like i own my own company my own business and there's ways to do those taxes my wife usually does them for me but as long as you stay um i forget what it's called but it's basically like having your own company your own business and you know your numbers so you put your numbers in the irs knows what it is there it is you know what i mean there's no there's no trouble with it right but you claiming and and having a shop but not having like a but doing that at your house i'm saying did that never create a situation where they have someone come check and look at the shop, or because I know like your shop talking shops, about the um the, the state board. People. Yeah, because they get they they do the regular <clears throat> they checks they, on shops I and know stuff, for right? A fact that they know who I am, what I do, but there's nothing that they can do. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I'm just somebody because from the outside asking because I'm clueless on it. They can only go to a barber shop. And regulate their rules and regulations to that shop. Okay. They cannot come to my home and tell me anything. So even like, okay. And I guess I'm forgetting too that 
there's women that have had shops out of their house since the beginning of time. It yeah, seems. Yeah, they so, don't yeah, bug yeah. them. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't aware of you know, it's whether like, or not they did get checked. What are they going to do? Can you imagine coming, some dude coming to your house and be like, hey, man, you can't cut it. Somebody's going to get slapped. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just come to people's house and be like, yeah, I'm coming in here to shut all this down. <laughs> You're not the police. <laughs> You're gonna get yourself hurt, man. You can't you, yeah. there's no way you can do it. Right. Gotcha. Now if you establish wherever you're at as a barber shop, and this is uh seen on Google and mm. this is a then they probably can have the right to come there and check you out and figure out what's going on. You got a shop license and blah blah blah, whatever, whatever. But I believe that pretty soon there's not going to be a need for those people just because in other cities, they're not, they're not there. Oh, okay. So like, in other this is a Columbus thing. This is an Ohio thing because Ohio wants money from everybody. Oh, okay. Okay. You know I, I mean? thought this was something that was going on everywhere. That's just like, if you own this house and you say, well, I want to knock it knock my kitchen wall out and I want to build something. You gotta get a permit. For they that. want you to pay for the inspections and the permits. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they want money from everything. You can know exactly what you're doing, know how to do it, whatever. But they're like, nah. Yeah, I hear want, New York is the worst for that. We want a piece of that. Yeah, I hear New York is the worst for that. Like they try to make you get licenses and permits for anything and everything, and they want their hand in everything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Gotcha, gotcha. I didn't know. I was totally unaware that. This was more of like something in this city or state or whatever, and that it it didn't apply everywhere. I kind of thought that was uh, uh, a across the board thing in like the United States or whatever because of like what we talked about, like the bacteria or this or that or whatever laws that would come into play. But that makes a lot of sense. And the other thing I guess that makes even more sense is now I'm seeing so much of the uh, what's the some of the bigger name apps where that like people can just go to the person and cut, mm-hmm. and that's become more popular. That makes sense too. That why kind of what I'm asking and those rules and details and stuff that I'm asking about don't really make too much sense or apply is because if you can, if it's legal and there's businesses that set up to just go cut somebody at any house mm-hmm. or outside or like, it's funny, a, a dude that I knew that cut here and then now he's out in LA cutting, he was doing it for a dude and uh, a dude had him cut him, come and cut him at his, uh, at his kid's soccer game. He's sitting on the sideline. Getting a cut with the uh, cordless clippers. Yeah. While he's watching this kid's soccer game. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, too. Like, I, do you feel any kind of way about that? That's something I always wondered with, like, barbers, too. Like, uh, do you think in that type of setting, do you think people are... Do you think something like that's disrespectful? Or do you think that people are going to try to get disrespectful with it to where they're, like, going to try to have somebody come to their house or a certain place or whatever and have to put up with certain things there or say, like, oh, you come to me type thing or whatever. Like, you're just a barber. It's not like... It's, it was weird. I felt like when I seen that, I was like, man, I don't know exactly how I feel about that. Like, that's a little iffy that... I mean, if you're a person that's doing it, you know what you're getting yourself into and you're coming. I'm sure you can leave and walk away whenever you want and say, like, hey, the same for me or I don't mm-hmm. feel comfortable here or whatever the case is. But do you feel any type of thing like that? Or what's your thoughts on, like, that whole just schedule somebody to come do it wherever you're talking about more of like a traveling yeah have you seen like those apps and stuff so like um i I wish i knew the name i can't i'm i should have wrote it down or something but i'm not recalling the name but like the guy that i know that's out in la i don't know if he's still doing it but he's doing a thing like that and that's where a lot of people are starting to bring in uh more business in a way for them to get more cuts and stuff is instead of just having to focus so hard on their brand and their or their shop or whatever the case is, they sign up for these apps where it's almost like, I don't want to say Uber or whatever this app, but it's something to where people can just book Shortcuts. them. What is it? Shortcuts. Shortcuts is one of them. I don't, I can't, I can't recall. They can just book them like what? Yeah, they, yeah, they can just book them and then the people just come to them and Groomed it's, is another one that's real big. what is it? Groomed. Groomed. Yeah, groomed is one of them. Hmm. But it's like, so like, uh, I, in LA, it seems it seems to really be the case. So, because you have a lot of your celebrities out there and people doing movies, TV, this and that, whatever, right. and uh, with their crazy schedules, it's like it's probably some of what you experienced. Come cut me at this set. Come mm-hmm. cut me uh, at this photo shoot. Come, you know what I mean? Here, this and that, whatever. Right. Or I'm gonna be at my house for this short period of time. I don't have time to make it to this shop or go with this and that, whatever. Yeah. Come here, this and that, whatever. And they just schedule it through the app. Hmm. Well, I mean, to me. 
they would have to compensate me extremely well gotcha. for me to do that. So if you're booking my time and I have to be somewhere at a specific time, you're about to pay me. You know what I mean? And yeah. They, so as long as those people are setting their prices to where they don't feel disrespected, then I feel like that that's probably going to work out pretty good. Gotcha. Because you can make way more money than you sitting in the shop. You know what I mean? Because you're already you are you already set a sta- a price in that shop, but you traveling is a different price. Gotcha. So hopefully they they're getting that price. Yeah, and it seems like that's opened up the game, man. It seems like it really has. It seems like being able to do something like what you're doing or doing what the apps are doing and stuff. It's really. I feel like it's a good thing. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of. It sounds like you're seeing a lot of people hating or saying that it's all oh, you're this or you're not. You're not a real barber or this and that. But it's like, yeah. what are they gonna say when everybody's doing it? Yeah, they're because, just. It sounds like they're just behind the ball. Yeah, the if you want to sit in the shop for eight to ten hours, man, by all means, do it. I don't want to do it. I never have wanted to do it. I've always wanted to, um, be on the go. You know what I mean? Cut other people in other cities and meet other people and travel. And I've always wanted to do that. I've never wanted to just sit in a barber shop for for eight to ten hours cutting all day like that. Yeah, well, and it's dope. And that's something that I like what you're saying too. It's just for different people and different uh, yeah. personalities. But uh, it, it also reminds me earlier when you said uh, it made you always had like a. Uh, that travel mentality and like an international mentality is what you have now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was trying to say at that time too, like there's already people that are very, very international. So like I follow a few guys and I'm, I can't, I'm drawing blanks today, but uh, they do something. And I don't know if you've seen barbering. I don't know if it's always been that heavy and that popular in uh, like Britain and over in England, stuff like that. Yeah. But it's, it's heavy. It seems the scene seems super heavy over there now. It is. And uh, there's a couple guys that have gotten really big, and they're going around doing their classes and seminars and stuff in <clears throat> Australia and Singapore. And I mean, they're yeah. just like maybe not single, but places like that. You know what I mean? Like I've seen them posting from places going all over the world, and they're making their own hair products, and they're like super popular, coming to the United States, selling well, like. And people can just take a, they need to take a page from their book, man. And because the barber industry, when I was younger, was nothing (coughs) compared to what it is now. It is a multi, multi multi-billion dollar industry. And for you not to try to touch some of that money is just a problem. If you're thinking that you're doing something by cutting hair in your best friend's barber shop, and you guys are booked, fine. But I want more. I want more. I want I want my own products. I want my own clipper line. And people tell me that that's impossible to do, your own clipper line. Because all we got is Andis, Walls. What else? Andis and Walls are the two biggest companies. They've Babilis, been holding down for a long time. Babilis yeah. is an up-and-coming company that's very big but why can't I why can't I have a, a clipper company that's that's trying to rival the other even if I'm competing a little bit mm-hmm. with them would be the thing because those companies they don't cater to those barbers in the hood they're not they're making a product and you open the box and a person like me I have to alter that that whole clipper for it to work for myself and all these haircuts. Now, if I make a product and out the box, it's ready to go, I'm winning. Yeah, for sure. I The one thing I do wonder is a lot of it for safety. Maybe do they run into some regulations or it things where be. they, they it, can't? Because the crazy part is now that you see so many, how many people modify them. Because mm-hmm. I, I modified my edgers. And uh, I've definitely modded a decent amount of my clippers that I've got, mm-hmm. but I haven't had to buy many because I've just been cutting myself for the most part and a few people here and there over the years. So I don't run through them like it's you or somebody else. It's just the point of making the option, though. Okay. If if I can make the option for you to be able to zero gap this 
clipper, then that's cool. You know what I mean? Because if you want if you want it to be backed off, then fine. But we need to make it an easier way to do it than just unscrewing four or five screws, taking this blade off, taking this off, making this work, then putting it all together. Oh, yeah, that ain't enough. Let me do it all over. Right. Again. Well, and the, another reason that makes a ton of sense is because, honestly, that's more of a safety concern, too. Because I don't know about you, but I know, like, early on when I was doing it, it was, like, on the fly. You were just... Because I feel like if you were somebody that cut on a regular basis, it's something you noticed right off the bat. Like, hold on, man. Why don't... Why can't these go all the way up? Or why don't mm -hmm. they? Or this yeah. and that. And it's like... And they could be cutting a lot better. And, and you start to tinker with them, but... If you don't know what you're doing, or that first time around, or yeah. whatever, you if might. If the blade goes past that guard, you're gonna cut. You're gonna slice somebody. The shit out of somebody. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, right. for There's sure. Definitely some safety issues. Well, but... and that's why if you were putting out one, I love that you're saying. The more I think about it, because if you were putting it out, if you were able to put it out that way from the jump, mm -hmm. then you eliminate people trying. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people the same way that I was saying about how they're scared to even attempt cutting their hair. I bet even barbers or people using clippers are scared to even like, I'm not going to take those apart because I'm going to not know how to put them back together or I'm going to just mess it up. I paid X amount of dollars for them. It's not like, I'm going to just use, I'm going to just make them work. I'm going to just mm -hmm. use them for what it is or I'm going to buy multiple pairs or whatever the case is. But even if you're not making something for the, for the masses, maybe you're making something for the, that barber that's already been cutting for 30 mm. years. You know okay. what I'm saying? So you know he already knows what what to do, what this what this uh tool might consist of and how how far to go, what not to do. He knows all the ins and outs. So you could cater to thousands of those of those people. I think with the level of respect, man, that you pull that you hold now online and, and the quality of the cuts that you're putting out and stuff, I think people would jump on your products man i really do i feel like you probably feel that too or maybe have a well i'm definitely gonna do uh a hair care line soon i'm just trying to wait my sister is doing hers first okay after we see how that goes then we're gonna do mine okay and you know it's definitely gonna be called Customados. So, oh yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. The brand is the brand, right? I mean, you yeah, gotta keep it. Hundred miles running. Gotta keep it. Got going. to, got to. I love, like I said, I love the logo. I love. Uh, I think it's something that a lot of people don't do, and we're, we're been we've dabbled with things, and I gotta get a logo going for this, and uh, but it's it's something that it's that it draws more even uh people to remember that name and mm -hmm. and to and to kind of because. I see it where the thing that I used to think about back in the day is I used to always think like, so why would somebody like, back in the day I used to think like if you were to put your custom model thing, especially because it's your face, if you put it on a shirt mm -hmm. or something like that, like what's going to make somebody want to wear somebody else's other brand? I don't know. But it's, it's huge now. I know. It's been, huge People have been now. asking me, do I have shirts and, and sweatshirts and, and all that? And I'm thinking to myself, like, why would they want to buy that? I don't get it. Man, it's because the respect. It's because people, and maybe you know this. I mean, I'm just putting it out there for the people that don't know. It's that once they get to following you and they actually build a relationship with you, honestly. I don't know if you know that or see that, mm -hmm. but like... People, uh, I was just telling somebody, I heard somebody talk about this the other day. They said that a lot of the people that we look up to or we have respect for, or we kind of uh, look at as role models, it's always because we see a little bit of something of ourselves in them. So you heard me say that early on when we first started talking. And then when I think about it with the products and things like that, it's like, so there's something about you that the people that are asking and the people that would buy see or feel that they really respect you or respect what you do or a number of different things that where they're like, I would wear that proudly. And I know that feels crazy to you. Like you said, like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of an odd feeling, whatever. But it's because that connection has been built over time of them seeing you are that guy that you say you are. You do put out the work that you yeah. say you do. You do care. Things like that. That's, that was one of the things that I seen. And that, that's why I kind of mentioned the, the style seat uh, reviews and things like that, whatever. It's because it was just like, 
if anybody wants to go look at it, and they go look at it right now. It's back to back to back to back to oh, back. There's a couple bad ones in there too. The bad ones too, but there's what, like when oh, I when yeah, I there's like what, two or three bad ones. When and I, I was like the bad ones, I was man, I was laughing. I cannot though. believe this guy lied. And yeah, said that. I was laughing too though because some of them like don't get me wrong. People say stuff about time and this and that. I feel like that's life, man. That's mm-hmm. what I feel like. Maybe that's because I'm a guy that isn't always the greatest with time and stuff like that too. But I feel like that's life, and you never know why someone is. A little bit off of their time schedule. It's not like to say they're unprofessional or they're this and that. You don't know what's going on in that person's life or what they did or what. That's mm-hmm. that's that. Well, in that. Barbary, let's say you got a schedule, right? So all it takes is one person to be late. Then don't domino, let it be two, domino effect. Two people late. Now you now you got a half an hour to you know twenty minutes of time that's gone now. So yeah, you're gonna be late so unless you can hurry up and catch up. With them appointments. So it's like with that, people just need to understand. But that guy, I believe, was sent to me. <laughs> I, I, I really do. Because everything he said was a lie, man. It was just a lie. He said I didn't do what um, what he asked me or he told me to do. And that's my biggest pet peeve in what I do. Oh, okay. I extremely listen to my client and and follow every step of what they want me to do. I never just go off of what I think and do it. I do what they want me to do. Do you really think never? Do you think never as far as uh, the reason I say that is because I thought about this last night when I was cutting. I was thinking sometimes if somebody comes to you and maybe they do, I'm sure they do because who knows, and they want something that is like played out as shit. Mm-hmm. Say somebody come to you says something crazy like, "Oh, I want a double edge with this, that, and the other." You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I see the eye roll already. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, do you try to persuade them, or do you? And I don't know if, if you're really dealing with that, but that's something I thought about as someone that doesn't cut in a shop or or, mm-hmm. or it isn't my profession. Like, do people get hit with that? Like, do or they Hell say yeah, they, they want do. these pencil sideburns with this and that mm-hmm. and stuff that just is like it's. Yep. It's, you know you could give them something that looks way better. They're going to be a lot more happier with. They just don't know it. I know a guy that if he let his beard grow, it's a full it's a full beard. Nice. And to me, you don't mess with a full beard, bro. If you're going to do the beard, just do the full beard. Let it go. Put the line up as far as it'll go. If you go. got it, for if sure. If you got it, do it. Bro, this dude wants the pencil. <laughs> The pencil. That's why. That's why. All I asked. the way through the chin, and I'm just like, why? I asked him. I said, bro, why do you want this? <laughs> and he's like, man, my girl, my girl likes it like this. And I was like, man, I just want to slap this girl. <laughs> I don't even know your girl, and I want to slap her, man. Like, why do you want your beard like this? Is disrespectful? Yeah, and the crazier part is too, like, uh, so like, don't get me wrong. I know, and you were for sure cutting during that time. But like in the what late nineties, early two thousands, that was that was it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was it. That's what yeah. everybody wanted. Everybody Everything had was the pencil, pencils, pointy yeah. sideburns. If if you didn't have the beard or the pencil full connect, yep. You know what I mean? The and, little skinny um, goatee. <laughs> yep. You know the whole thing. So it's like that. That's over with now, though. <laughs> that's over with. Everybody's. If you can grow a full beard, man, you want it nice, sharp, connected. Right. Oh, I'm always envious, man. Mine grows patchy and grows weird. And it took me this long. I'm 30 something years old. It took me this long to even get here. And it's still like rough, man. When I see somebody with the full one, I'm like, I tell my girl or my wife all the time. And I uh, I tell other people and especially my wife, she's always like, no, no, no. But I tell her, I'm like, if it was all the way, I was like, if it grew everywhere that I needed to, I was like, I'd be Rick Ross or something. Like, <laughs> mine would be, mine would be full. It'd be vicious. I was like, but it's so patchy and it grows in red and this and that. I'm like, <clears throat> yeah. But that looks so dope when you got the comb over, like how you got yours. Oh, and, with the full beard. With the beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. looks yeah. dope to that, me. Yeah, when I see a lot of the cuts posted and stuff like that, it's like I see the difference in when you see somebody post it on just like a kid or mm-hmm. somebody that doesn't have it to connect yeah. to everything. And it's yeah. like, it can still be an amazing, amazing cut, like you yeah. said, with the nice part, comb over this, that, whatever, however fade, no matter what. But that beard just yeah. sets it off. And I think it's, 
something that I noticed early on, and I see you've always been real big on, and I that's another thing I will never understand about certain barbers too, is when they don't fade into the beard. Mm-hmm. So they like fade the shit out of the hair and right. the and, and the sideburns and the blend and stuff here and on the yeah. sides or back or the taper or whatever. And you just got the blunt. And it's just a blunt start of the right. sideburns or the beard, and I'm just like, especially when you see they can cut good. You see it in the in mm-hmm. in the blend and in the hair and stuff, and you're like, yeah, what are you doing? Because when you get that where it can fade up here and fade down into the beard, I yeah. think that's I think you're right on the money that that yeah, really sets so. it off. That's where some of your best cuts come from for sure. Mm-hmm. It's just the tran that transition. I mean, that's even with the blend. People don't recognize the transition between the the top of where the hair will start either curly or straight the thickest part of the hair until the bottom if if it's a if it's a if it's a tight blend then you want it to be bald at the bottom and gradually go up to where you see that transition you know if you see too much of something you know what I mean? At a certain level, going too high, then that's when you lose the transition. Mm-hmm. And it's, it'll throw the whole haircut off. Right, right. It won't look as good as a true blend from that that transition point. It just looks way better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, when I see your cuts, man, it's like, I always feel like it's the epitome of what you're talking about, man. I, I, your cuts are so next level to me, man, because it's... I know, don't get me wrong, I know we only get to see small bits of social media and see like what people put out there, and it's mm-hmm. easy for people to put out the best pictures yeah. or the best is that. But I think, like I said, I think the, really, the thing that really speaks to what you're doing is the fact that you put the videos out, and people get to see, okay, this ain't just, this ain't just for show to, get the, to make it look like I'm nice at what I do or whatever. You watch the video, watch the 360, and, and see for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and you got to, like, when I was posting stuff, and then I remember people saying, like, oh, you use, you use dye. There's no way it's that sharp or whatever. And I was just, like, throwing me all off. I was like, I've never used any dye, or what is this dude talking about? What is he looking at? Like, some people's tools, like, I've been doing it so long, so I know how to make my equipment work for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my edgers, they have to be on point. So, when I'm going through the hair, it just has to be crisp. Like, bam, bam, bam. Because, you know, doing too much of something... Over and over and over. Now you're getting these red marks and, you know, people being too aggressive and too heavy handed. Like you want to be light, but you want your, your equipment to be as sharp as possible. And that's how you get those lines. That's how you get everything looking crisp to where somebody can ask you like, oh, you did you get that dyed? Mm. Like. I mean, if you if you cut a gentleman right and his hair is jet black and your equipment is on point, it will damn near look like you use some dye or something. Or it's drawn on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I just was, like we said earlier, my pride wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. The the guy that I mentioned earlier that I, <clears throat> that I cut for a long time and that kind of was my best consistent client paying well and stuff like that. He had jet black hair, and when I was cutting his hair, it was funny. A friend of his would always say, "Oh man, it looks like you drew that on. It looks like it's drawn on. It's mm-hmm. so it's so clean." And it was because I was cutting him so consistently. I had right. started to get some better tools and stuff like that. But it's weird too that you say that. I'm glad you did say that because that's something I never considered too. Which some of the people that are probably hating on certain people or feeling like they don't know what they're doing because they see cuts or red marks or this that and other. It could be something that simple, and that's something I never thought about. It could mm-hmm. be they don't have the right tools or they don't understand how important it is mm-hmm. to have a really sharp, uh, uh, sharp set of clippers, a sharp edgers and stuff, and and zero gapped and all that type of thing. Right. Uh, the the pencil was a thing that I just like. I've seen it over the years, mm-hmm. but it's something now that I'm seeing more and more common. Are you seeing it more as well too? I or? never knew what the pencil was. Bro. I I didn't until I, just the other day. Yeah, like I, I don't had even seen. Know what it's for? Well, you still don't now. Yeah, yeah, I 
Okay, I seen a guy use it, and I thought that he was basically because he was fixing a, um, a bad a edge cut. Up. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was fixing That's it. where I first seen it too. So he was mapping it out to where the hair was supposed to be. Exactly. And then he um, he used dye and went behind that, and then it darkened it from that pencil point. And then when he razored it in, it just looked like. It was supposed to be like that. Gotcha. And I was like, okay, is that what they use the pencil for? Like, and then I was still confused because I'm like, it seemed like the pencil is just a waste of time. Just line it where it's supposed to be, and then use the dye after. But I, I don't know. I don't. I still, am, I'm clueless. What I saw from it the other day because a guy, that, a young guy that I follow, that has a, a really big following, and uh, is, I love what he's doing, man. He blew up, and he's only like 19, but uh. He, he used it and kind of explained it the other day. And the way it made sense for me is <clears throat> so it's to put that uh, uh, almost like the, the contrasting difference. So like, you know, if you add somebody up and they're kind of ashy or it's dry or whatever, yeah. you know how you get the ash line mm -hmm. and it makes it look sharper and crispier, especially like you said, if they have dark hair, because then it's like black on white almost right. or black on that ash. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what he showed is putting it on and then as he would... Put it there first, and then as he would start taking his edgers or his straight razor afterwards and hitting it, hmm. he's blending it, and what it does is it's just making the edge stand out even more. Okay. But he just what he does is after but he puts still, it on, it's still cosmetic. It's an enhancement. That's exactly yeah. what it is. So I normal. thought like you did. I thought it was like they were just mapping it out for themselves and trying to have like almost like a line to trace, maybe that. Because if people want the ash line, you, all they gotta do is <coughs> either. You can wash wash the hair with a great shampoo. It'll dry out this whole area around the lineup. And when you put your liners on there, it's going to do that ash line immediately anyway. Or you can take like a 90% alcohol, rub that around the lineup. It'll do the same thing. Okay. You Because you, you want the area that you're about to be lining up to be as dry as as possible so that the hair will fall off easy as possible right and the hair's not laying down or sticking or yeah so you want that area to be as clean as possible dry as possible the whole thing so there's i mean there's a lot of ways that they can get that little look however they want it but it's all going to wipe away anyway mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's the point of having that sharp line of the actual hair. Right. That's what you want. I think it falls into that line of what we were talking about with the enhancement and stuff like that. We're in this social media era now, man. And especially now yeah. that, especially now, honestly, too, though, that people do do photo shoots and videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It makes sense that they're okay with or want a one time super clean looking look. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like, it's like you said, it's going to fade or it's going to wash out or it's going to go away. Yeah. But they need it or want it to look a certain way for and at I'm, least this And I'm minute. not the guy to tell you that that's not wrong you know right. what i mean that's it's a good thing it just has to be done in the right way but yeah before we uh start to wrap things up and get all the way out of here man uh so what's something you can tell other barbers and even people that are just in other walks of business but definitely in the barber industry of if they're thinking like man i aspire to be like him one day or to take my business to the next level or to be able to do my own thing at least for sure of not having to be restricted to a shop or work for someone else or just not what's kind of what do you tell them what's the route to go or or what should they focus on well first of all being like um if you want to say me um how i did it was Doing what I do has been not taught to me, but it's like uh, uh, something that was uh, just kind of like in me to do the the whole cutting hair thing, period. It's like I kind of just knew how to do it. Uh, it sounds weird, but it's just like I never was taught. How to do that. I knew how to cut hair before I went to barber college, barber school, whatever. I, I was cutting hair good on a, on a good level. I got better because I wanted to be better. 
So I strived to do everything. I seen my own mistakes. When I was done with a haircut, I could see my own mistake. Nobody had to tell me nothing. Some people would just be like, oh, yeah, man, that's fire. That's dope. But I would be sitting there looking like, all right, I know what I did wrong. Okay, now I know how to fix that. That's what I'm going to do on the next time. And you just you just grab all these mental things and you fix them yourself. But now, social media, you got all these guys that are good. You got me. I'll help anybody that's looking for it. If you want to know anything, you can ask me. I'm not trying to hide anything that I do. I never have. I've showed people on videos exactly what I do. But learning can definitely happen. And I believe that schooling has to be better in our in our selective uh, cities and states. They all have to do better. But learning from people that's already made the mistakes and and uh, everything that they've done wrong to fix would be the best option. So if you can find me, I'll help you. I'll help anybody that's looking for the help. But to say you want to be like me, I don't know how that would. uh, I don't know how to go about doing that. All I know is I've been cutting hair since I was 14. And up to the point of me cutting college students that are popular as far as Braxton Miller cutting him and um, him going to the league, uh, me cutting Zeke, him going to the league and finding one of those clients that will bring you along is a long shot. It just, it just, it really is. It's a, it's a long shot because it's not guaranteed. You know, you can cut somebody all through college and they go to the league and end up with a whole nother barber in their state. Because honestly, what Zeke does for me is probably expensive for a lot of people to do. But he looks at it in the way of he feels comfortable with me. He knows what he wants, how he wants it, and I'm the guy that can handle that situation. Yeah, well, and people trust their barber and stick with a barber even in everyday life. So it makes sense that someone could, that can afford to Mm-hmm. Would would do it even at the higher level, but I also do understand what you're saying that even if you do have someone through college and they blow up like that, or maybe even not in sports but in another realm, you know what I mean whether they model, whether they act, whether they do whatever, sometimes you might lose them just out of convenience, yeah. which I understand too. You know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. it, they just might be like, oh man, there's no way I'm in I've lost Japan my here whole and city this <laughs> about convenience. <laughs> they act like. Uh, Driving to the west side is the most <laughs> craziest thing that they're going to do that day. So it's like, who cares? All right, buddy. There's right. 10 more people that want to be in your place. So, you know. Well, I think what you're saying by that is the product is what speaks for itself. And like the work you put out yeah. is what will make or break whether you're still successful for because of it or if you continue to have clients or if yeah. someone chooses to stick with you and carry on with you like Zeke did. I think Zeke's seen something in you that I've seen in you that a lot of other people have seen since. And it's like, you're not just going to stumble across that level of work. You're not just going to stumble across the level of expertise that you have and the care that you give and the attention to detail Right. where you really want. You've said it over and over in so many different ways throughout this podcast about ways that you just want to hit that next that next mark that next thing implement this next little thing all next time i'm always striving to be better Mm -hmm. and for you to even say that now at the level you're at i'm sure there's a lot of people like man how how how's he going to get better how does he how's he critique that like but it's 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 something that's i hear common in everybody that is is really doing their thing and and their craft man there's definitely more 
Or you can always do more. That's dope, man. It, when you were saying stuff about like always seeing something, were you the type, like kind of how I was too early on or cutting at your house or whatever, somebody stand up and you see it in a different light or something, you're like, yeah. oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. No, no, sit back down or let me hit it right there while you're Definitely. standing or, okay. All, all young barbers or any barber to me should sometime in the cut walk away from it. Mm. Walk away from it. I don't, I don't care what you do. Go wash your hands, do something, come back to the cut, and I guarantee you, you're going to see something that needs to be touched. That makes a lot of sense, man. I do that at times when I'm cutting my own hair where I'm like, or I'll get kind of frustrated feeling like I'm not getting something just right how I want it. And I'm like, man, let me go grab a drink of water or something. Let me go mm-hmm. chill for a second. I even times at times because I'm at home and it's my own thing, I'm like, I'll go get on my phone for a second or watch TV for a second and then come yeah. back to it or whatever. And you actually do a very good job of cutting your own hair. That's, I appreciate that. Nah, that's your, like, hair, your hair looks dope for bro, real. Bro, that's the craziest compliment ever, like, man, to come from you. That's yeah. that's like sitting here with LeBron or somebody telling me oh, <laughs> you're decent at basketball. Like, that's crazy, man. Nah, I really appreciate real. that, it's, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's nice. I appreciate that for sure. It's like I think, don't get me wrong, I think it's kind of easier to get good at your own you do it so often, yeah. you know the ins and outs, yeah. things like that, whatever. So I, I always felt that at times, like, dang, man, I, if you gave somebody, like you said, somebody, you felt like, oh, I could have done this a little bit better stuff. It's like, if it was mine, I would just fix it right now or tomorrow or whatever this thing. And you kind of feel bad sometimes with someone like, ah, oh, but you just implement that thing. Like you said, oh, I'm going to get them next time. I'm going to remember this next time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But for yourself, it's like, I, I, I get a lot of practice on my own thing or something like that. But I, I critique mine like crazy, and I'm sure you do too. Like, could critique your own work, or if you cut your own hair or something, it's, there's always a lot of times it takes me a, a crazy long time because I'm like, I always see, oh, I could do a little more. I could do a little more. Or I could make this look, I might be able to, or, and then sometimes I'm changing my mind in the mid, like, oh, nah, I'm gonna do the fade a little higher, or I'm gonna do right. this a little different with my beard, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna. And it's like, it just drags on. And I'm sure my wife hates it because she's like, get on down here because this kid's driving me crazy. And <laughs> right. <laughs> you you up there st- having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got stuff to do. So, I mean, I think it's dope. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the compliment. And I'm super glad you came on. And uh, this this was cool, man. This was real cool. And if, yeah. if you ever are interested, man, we can talk some more too about figuring out something if you want to do something. And man, I, I tell everybody who comes on here, man, if you've ever thought about starting your own thing or doing something like this, even with somebody that's in your space or somebody you're around a lot to where you guys could do something and they could call in or, or we could do it, whatever, let me know if I can help you with it or, or tell you, you know what I mean, what kind of stuff we I'd rather bought. You let, you, let the professionals. My guy, my guy. <laughs> you do this. I, this is not my lane <laughs> at all. But no, nah, this is super cool, though. I do I do like it. I didn't know what to, uh, what to expect, the ins and outs, but... Uh, I do like it though. It's cool. I appreciate it, man. Well, definitely, if uh, if 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 there's ever time again in your busy schedule, man, or there's something that uh, you really just want to get on and rant about, or or get out to the people, especially like teaching and stuff like that. I think that's what a lot of people turn to all this kind of media now yeah. to is to learn and and to hear from some of the greats or people that they really know are on top of their game. Yeah, my next step is definitely to uh, figure out how to hold some classes and um, figure out who would benefit from that and learn because I don't want to just do what everybody's been doing already. Just jump on YouTube, do some videos. And I mean, some of those videos, you can't even see what the dude is really doing. You know what I mean? Uh, you talking about because of speed or because of yeah, what? Yeah, or maybe maybe the, the camera is not set up oh, okay. to where, I mean, sometimes you see this dude's back, mm-hmm. you know, in most of the videos. Like, it's uh, I think holding a class, you know, and it, it it could be expensive for somebody that's in another city or whatever to to come. But I just feel like that hands on work for you to really come up and to actually see what I'm doing and and to benefit from that would be the best way to do it. It makes sense. I like a lot of your videos. Are you recording them yourself? Because it kind of looks like you are. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I don't have. See, that's even doper though, because nothing. you and and that shows that you know though, and it shows that you you pay attention, like you said, of uh, the angle and this and that, whatever. That it shows. I always see that it's a good look and it's in a good 
lighting and space to where you can really get an idea and see up close of what you're trying to show. I love that you're always doing the flick of the clipper with the corner. Dude. So I don't know if that's something that you were hitting Let me at. tell you something. I, you know how long I've been doing that, man? I, I love it. I have been doing that since I was probably like 19 years old, right? And when I started doing it on Instagram, it was nothing to me because this is just what I've been doing. So people was like, you're just being you, man, you ain't even touching the hair. What are you doing? Like that's, you're not even, you know, you're not touching any hair at all. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm blending the hair. There's thicker parts through the hair that I'm just flicking out. You know what I mean? Instead of putting a guard on and taking trying some chunk. to, yeah, I, I only learned how to do that because I broke my guard. Mm. So with the guard broke, I had to finish this haircut. I was broke. It ain't like I was about to run to the store mm-hmm. and get another guard. So I had to figure it out. Yeah, somebody was about to be sitting there cut like, oh, yeah, I'll wait here for a half an hour. You run and right. pay at the store and come back. So that's a, that's a technique. And I see people doing it all the time now. So, man, I don't... Uh, it's, it's definitely probably some, the influence for sure. Dude. I can tell with me, I I kind of picked it up, kind of the same thing. I even had a time where, like, I was cutting my own hair and I dropped the clippers mm-hmm. and the, the metal guard right. snapped on the one side. The corner broke off. I, mm-hmm. I mean, you've been cutting for years. I'm sure you've had that happen too. Yep. So where I was like... I didn't even want to get close on that side because, like you said, those blades will slice yeah. you when they're exposed. And you like was that. crazy for doing that. <laughs> I had to finish. You was, you was you was a crazy man. No, I had to finish the cut. I wasn't about to walk outside or go yeah. whatever, looking like uh, I just let my kid cut that, my hair. That cut could have been. It man, was just a chip, man. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a chip. It was just a chip <laughs> off the corner. So, but right. but it also made me so like I I knew like I wanted to stay. With that side of the clipper, you know what I mean, and and mm-hmm. avoid the, touch the other side. But I started noticing, like, oh, like it's taking out little small pieces yeah. and little things to break up the line. So and like it, when you're working on it, a line, and it makes the blend look impeccable, man. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. And it's like when you perfect it, you could take it from the the thick part of the hair all the way down to the the bottom of the blend and do the same thing. Okay. All the way through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause people think you can just, you know, you throw in this big guard and take that bulk out. You really don't have to. If the hair is clean, dry, ready to be cut, man, it's crazy. Like with some stray hair, I can, I don't need no guard. I can just, it's all about, you know what I mean? You 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 have a feel for it, and that's that's what a lot of cutting hair is about. That that feel, you know what I mean? People, I see people just putting that guard on and slapping it on the side of somebody's head and just taking it up crazy. And it's like, you know, where's the control? Mm-hmm. There's got to be some control there. There's got to be a, a, a feeling of of what you're doing, right? And you for the people I mean? that are just listening, he's he's showing. With his hands, just the curve out, you basically, you know what I mean? Like you're, like you right. were saying earlier, a flick out and the curve of the wrist. And I think that feel, if I can put it in my words too, it's like when you're starting to hit a line or a certain part of the hair or whatever, you can hear it in the clippers mm-hmm. when it catches. Yeah. So you know when you're getting into the hair. Right. But then also you can feel that little bit of resistance yep. and drag in the clippers when you're hitting the hair. And even if you don't have a guard, you can kind of stay back and stay out and just slightly touch it mm-hmm. to where you don't need to say, oh, man, that hair's at this length. I need this guard to right. stay at this space away from it. It's kind of being steady-handed and experienced and yeah. stuff, but at the same time, you can learn that. Like, I learned it through a video one time, I think, where he was saying, a guy was saying, like, yeah, you you can you can gauge it. You know what I mean? You can kind of just, just try to s- slowly hit it. Don't mm-hmm. go in right off the bat and take out way more. Right. You can always take off more, but you can't put back on. <laughs> right. And those ways of cutting hair is just, it's over. It's over. There is no, let me get a three. Mm. There, it, It's over. I know people that think they know what uh, 
what that what that guard is gonna do, mm-hmm. and they have no clue. Yeah, because <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, man, just take a take a three all over the top, and then uh, blend the sides, and then so I'll say, all right, yeah, I'm gonna show you what this three do. So I put the three on. It ain't taking no hair. This mm-hmm. is the three. You 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 want it lower? Oh, that's the three. Okay, maybe I need a two. All right, well let's do the two. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> how about how about you just let me just do what I do? Yeah. Well, see, and I think that does point through what I was saying earlier. So you do kind of give a, a little bit, even if it's not a recommendation, but you 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 drag them and the, pull yeah. them in the right direction. I let them. I let them mess up. Yeah, because you don't want to take off too much off the jump. Yeah, I say what they're going to say. And I already know what a guard is going to do and mm-hmm. what it's not going to do. You know what I mean? So, because sometimes I got people saying like, oh, yeah, I want to win. I'm like, oh, so you about to be bald? You, ball? Ball? <laughs> you want to be, it's going to be low, what, what, buddy. What Jay-Z say? Fresh one blade, yeah, no chemo? Yeah, the fresh one blade, no chemo. <laughs> That's what you want? You don't, you don't okay. know what you're asking for sometimes. Like, nah, I'll be yeah. like, nah, that ain't what you want, buddy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to wrap it up, man, so I don't keep here too long. I, I appreciate you like crazy coming out hey, here, man. I appreciate it too, Putting man. in the time fun here. for me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do it again. That's anytime. dope, man. That's something else that feels great for me to hear, man. I love hearing that, and I love that uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, hearing that from somebody of your uh, caliber, man. But uh, so for the people who don't know, give them your IG handle so they can come see you, uh, see your work at least, uh, and get an idea of what we're talking about when we're sitting here explaining out the level of a uh, product that is getting displayed there. Yes, sir. Instagram is C U T Z D A M A T O underscore T H E <laughs> underscore G O D. Gotcha, gotcha. Custom motto to God. My God. Which has changed. It wasn't that last year. Last year it was just custom auto, but I thought I'd ref- ruffle a couple feathers <laughs> out here and, you know, let, let them know that I'm the god of this barber stuff. Yeah, and I, man. And I've been doing it for a while, and I'm, I like to claim my spot. To me, you are, man. To me, you're definitely, especially uh, for me growing up and going through just that time period of seeing everything. So I've seen a lot on social media now, man. I've seen a lot. I follow a lot of pages now. Mm-hmm. I, the barbering stuff is loaded on my popular page on my Instagram because of the stuff yeah. I like and follow. So that's, that's all nuts. That's all I get for the most part. Like, it's crazy. I know there's so many people that they pick up my phone, they're like, oh, this dude has to be a barber or something. <laughs> that's what his feed is filled with. Right. But from what mine I see, is, man, Mine is, for some reason, Cardi B is all over my <laughs> thing. And I'm like, I don't understand why. I follow her, but I'm just like, it's like Cardi B and then haircuts. Oh, man. I'm like, what is going on? Somebody oh, and whales. It's like whales. Just orcas what? and stuff oh, yeah, like you that. Had, you either searched the, clicked on the hashtag, <laughs> searched the hashtag, somebody oh, no. picked up your phone and searched I'm it. all over the place. Yeah, man. That's, that, that's a wild combina- combination. Mine's real basic. Real basic. It's like haircutting, uh, basketball, uh, fitness. That's yeah. like that's like what my, comes up on mine, man. It's just I'm um, right. somehow I got lucky, and it, it's kind of my and interest. Does, does anybody know how ripped you are? <sighs> that's another crazy compliment. I, I appreciate, see, but man, I, really I see don't know. your page one time, and I was like, "Is this dude Photoshop his whole body? <laughs> his body is Photoshop, <laughs> and you are just man, stupid ripped." The, huh? Uh, the, and then your wife works out too, right? Yeah, yeah. She's pregnant right now with our next one, so she's off. pregnant again. Yeah, yeah. So she's or off. Has she? Been, how long is she? Uh, she's about four, fourteen weeks right now. So oh, okay, it's not crazy long. We only have one, and then so this will be our second. Oh, but yeah, okay. she, she, so she randomly, she still gets it in now from time to time. She tries not go too crazy or too hard or do anything that yeah compromise it. But yeah, yeah, she gets it in too. She. She's she's not as hardcore with it, with it with me because she's she's a snackaholic and uh, all that type of stuff. So she has a love hate relationship with it. I I got a lot of love love for it because it it's done a lot for me. Like personally, mm-hmm. my health was bad at times and it kind of helped me out of that, which yeah. surprised the hell out of me. I never would have thought like working out would improve health conditions, especially for somebody that's skinny. You know what I mean? I thought like mm-hmm. I want to go make things worse or I'm gonna lose more weight or just right. that. So it did a lot of good things for me. But you saying about like how I'm rich and stuff like that. A big part of it, man, is because I'm so lean and I'm so skinny. So a lot of it looks better than it really is, or in pictures or videos, it looks better than it is. Right. But hey, the 
the the Instagram. I, we live in that life, man. And I, I, right. I think I fall into it the same way every does. If you have a good picture or video or something that you're like, oh, I'm feeling kind of good right now. This <laughs> is maybe it's just like I right. posted a, a a cut or two that I've done a haircut. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And yeah, yeah, it's just to me, it's the same feeling, man. It's something you feel good about. You yeah. know what I mean? And those likes feel good. We all can't deny it. Mm-hmm. They feel good. I try to put out stuff that I do just for people too, but that stuff feels good too, man. Yeah. I'm I'm an honest dude about it. But uh, let's get it wrapped up, man. Everybody, go follow this dude. See what he's see what he's putting out there. You, I'm super glad that he came on. And everybody gets to see what he's actually about and the type of man he is. And uh, it's yeah, it, it's good it's time. yeah, man. It's been good for me. And uh, I I can't thank you enough, man. Let's get get out of here. And yes, sir. Hope I, I can get you. Hope it. I can get you back on again for sure. Oh yeah, we are gonna do it again. My guy, appreciate Definitely. you, man.